The uh, committee will come to order. Uh, we're meeting today to consider several measures that will reform and improve key elements of the Department of Homeland Security. These measures will streamline bureaucracy, save money, provide strong congressional direction to the department, and strengthen the committee's oversight role. Collectively, these bills ensure DHS will be a leaner and more efficient department by eliminating several unnecessary assistant secretary positions, abolishing unneeded offices and consolidating other offices that are not operating efficiently. These bills also eliminate unnecessary and costly reports within the department. We also mandate efficiency reviews that will help ensure taxpayer dollars are not wasted and are better spent to protect the homeland. Most importantly, these bills strengthen national security and protect the homeland. I appreciate the work that members and staff on both sides of the aisle have done to bring us to this point. And I want to uh, give a special thank you to the ranking member for all of his efforts. Uh, this, uh, in tradition with this committee, has been a bipartisan, collaborative effort, which is the best way for us to reform this key national security uh, department. And just this week, it was reported that DHS once again scored at the bottom of the pack in a survey of federal employee morale. I hope that our efforts here today might turn this around. Each of the bills that passed out of subcommittee was by voice vote, and I hope that spirit of cooperation will continue here today. I'm very proud of this committee, and in this era of constant and evolving threats, we need to work together. Uh, both Republican and Democrat, to strengthen the security of the homeland. And in the interest of time, I will keep my remarks brief so we can move on. I also want to thank the ranking member uh, and staff on both sides of the aisle for the great work uh, that they did in, in uh, the report of combating terrorism uh, and foreign fighters that was issued yesterday. Uh, once again, I think this committee demonstrates that we can work together for the, the good of the country. And with that, I recognize the ranking member. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. And before I start, uh, and let me compliment you on your leadership in getting us to, by the end of the day, will be a historic markup. I've been around uh, a little while, and I've never been in a markup with 15 bills. So uh, I don't know if this is a record for Congress, but it sure is a record for this committee and a tribute to your, your leadership. I'd also like to uh, acknowledge uh, Hank Savage, uh, who's here, and Matt uh, Eckstein, who will be here uh, a little bit later, who's in Ledge Council. You know, these guys have given up weekends and uh, taken sabbaticals from families and everything else to get us to this point. And I'd just like to acknowledge their uh, very generous uh, time committed to making this happen. As I said, I want to uh, uh, thank you for working with me and the Democratic members of this committee to advance a wide range of timely legislative matters. The roster for today is ambitious and includes vehicles for each of our six subcommittees. By and large, there is bipartisan agreement uh, on these measures and many of these amendments that members are expected to present today. I'd like to highlight four bills, however, uh, sponsored by committee Democrats. H.R. 3350, as introduced by a ranking member of the Committee on Counterterrorism Subcommittee, Representative Higgins, is targeted at ensuing that the best minds come together to protect our citizens and roadways from the threats of release or misappropriation of chemical, biological, radiological, or nuclear material. Uh, the No, the CBN Terrorism Threats to Transportation Act was introduced in response to a decision by the Department of Energy to allow nuclear waste to be transported on our roadways. That decision was made without the benefit of timely information about the threat picture. Enactment of H.R. 3350 will ensure that DO, DOE gets that information. Representative Richmond, the ranking member on the Cybersecurity Subcommittee, introduced H.R. 3510, the DHS Cybersecurity Strategy Act of 2015, in response to a recent Office of Inspector General's report 
that found that coordination among DHS components and offices involved in executing its multifaceted cybersecurity mission was lacking. H.R. 3510 will put DHS on the right path by requiring DHS to have a department-wide strategy and plan. Representative Payne, a ranking member of the Emergency Preparedness Subcommittee, introduced H.R. 3144, the Partners for Aviation Security Act, to prevent TSA from making changes to the list of items that passengers are prohibited from bringing on a plane without consulting its main partners in aviation security, the organization that make up the Aviation Security Advisory Committee. Enactment of 3144 will strengthen the partnership between TSA and stakeholders who share its commitment to security. The ASAC, the final Democratic bill to be in considered uh, is legislation that I introduced, H.R. 3505, the Department of Homeland Security Clearance Management and Administration Act. As the title suggests, Mr. Chairman, it seeks to improve how DHS manages its clearance process at all stages, from decisions on whether to designate positions as requiring clearances to process to ensure uniformity in how clearances are adjudicated, suspended, denied, and revoked. I appreciate again Chairman McCall's willingness to work with me and the Democrats on this committee. Uh, before I yield back, I'd like to acknowledge that many of the bills under consideration today are the product of extensive bipartisan collaboration. In particular, I'd like to single out three major bipartisan bills. H.R. 3572, the DHS Headquarters Reform and Improvement Act of 2015, as advanced by Oversight Chairman Perry and Ranking Member Watson Coleman. H.R. 3583, the Prepare Act, as advanced by Emergency Preparedness Chair McSally and Ranking Member Payne. H.R. 3578, the DHS Science and Technology Reform and Improvement Act as advanced by Cybersecurity Chair Ratcliffe and <coughs> Ranking Member uh, Richmond. Uh, we also had on the floor uh, this week a bill by uh, uh, Mr. Vila, and uh, I think we've had uh, excellent uh, floor time with bills, Mr. Chairman, uh, this session, and I look forward to many of these bills. Uh, also having uh, floor time. With that, I yield back. And I thank the ranking member for your comments. Uh, as I always say, the terrorists don't check our party affiliation. Um, and I think uh, this probably is a record uh, number of bills uh, in a markup for this committee. And we've had many come to the floor uh, uh, on both sides of the aisle. Uh, and uh, I'm very proud of that. Um, the committee today is a meeting for consideration of H.R. Uh, 3572, the Department of Homeland Security Headquarters Reform and Improvement Act of 2015, H.R. 3361, the Department of Homeland Security Insider Threat and Mitigation Act of 2015, H.R. 3505, the Department of Homeland Security Clearance Management and Administration Act, H.R. 3350, the Know the CBRN Terrorism Threats to Transportation Act, H.R. 3503, the Department of Homeland Security Support to Fusion Centers Act of 2015, H.R. 3598, the Fusion Center Enhancement Act of 2015, H.R. 3586, the Border and Maritime Coordination Improvement Act, H.R. 3583, the Promoting Resilience and Efficiency in Preparing for Attacks and Responding to Emergency, or the PREPARE Act, H.R. Uh, 3578, the DH Science, and Technology Reform and Improvement Act of 2015, H.R. 3510, the Department of Homeland Security Cybersecurity Strategy Act of 2015, H.R. 3490, the Strengthening State and Local Cybercrime Fighting Act, H.R. 3493, the Securing the Cities Act of 2015, H.R. 3584, the Transportation Security Administration Reform and Improvement Act of 2015, H.R. 3102, the Airport Access Control Security Improvement Act of 2015, and finally, H.R. 3144, the Partner, Partners for Aviation Security Act. That's quite a, uh, quite a lot of bills. 
um, that we're advancing today. And I want to thank um, the ranking member again and other members of the committee are reminded that opening statements may be submitted for the record. By agreement between the chair and ranking member, the committee by unanimous consent shall use an amendment roster today. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Ranking members recognized. Reserving the right to object, and I will not object, would the chair please explain our agreement regarding the amendment roster? And I yield to the chair. And I thank the gentleman and all committee members for agreeing to the use of an amendment roster. We have agreed that the bills be open to amendment at any point and that we shall take up amendments in the order listed on the roster. The chair will allow members to offer amendments listed on the roster out of order to the extent practicable in a, a manner not prohibited by the House or committee rules. Amendments not listed on the roster may be considered at the conclusion of the consideration of the roster. The chair would also note that there is a bipartisan agreement on many of these amendments. Members may be permitted to offer their amendments on block. I thank the chair for his explanation and withdraw my reservation. I thank uh, the ranking member for your uh, uh, bipartisan cooperation. Uh, I now call up H.R. 3572, the Department of Homeland Security Headquarters Reform and Improvement Act of 2015. The bill was circulated in advance and printed copies are available. The clerk shall designate the bill. H.R. 3572. Without objection, the first reading is dispensed with and the bill is considered read and open to amendments uh, at any point. Does any member wish to be recognized on the bill? There being no further discussion of the bill, the committee will move to consideration of the amendments on the roster. Per the roster agreement listed first is an amendment offered by the gentleman from Mississippi, Mr. Thompson. Would the gentleman like to offer his amendment? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. I have two amendments listed on the roster and ask unanimous consent that they be considered en blanc at this time. Without objection, so order, the clerk shall report the en bloc amendment. En bloc amendment to H.R. 3572, offered by Mr. Thompson. Without objection, the reading of the amendment is dispensed with. Mr. Thompson is recognized for five minutes on the en bloc amendment. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, since Secretary Johnson has been leading DHS, he's repeatedly directed enhanced security operations in response to intelligence about threats posed by violent extremism and terrorist groups. While I commend Secretary Johnson for his responsiveness to the threat picture, I'd note that each time the sec security operations are surged at an airport or at a federal building, new costs are incurred. Unforeseen and unbudgeted new costs such as overtime and personnel costs. My amendment to the underlying bill asked the secretary to report annually on the circumstances where money was moved around to cover the cost of operational surge activities. It also directs the secretary to report on instances where funds were not transferred or reprogrammed to cover such costs. My second amendment will provide Congress with greater insight into the effectiveness of administrative agreements between the Department of Homeland Security and contractors to resolve suspension and debar debarment proceedings. My interest in suspension and debarment stems in part from the case of a company that supplied TSA X-ray scanners with unauthorized foreign parts. TSA was tr so troubled about that company's practices that it pursued federal debarment. Ultimately, in June 2013, TSA resolved the matter with an administrative agreement which preserved the company's eligibility to compete for government contracts in exchange for taking specific actions to improve their <coughs> integrity and compliance with rules. Last October, DHS modified this June 2013 administrative agreement, extending its duration. Today, little is known about the department's use of administrative agreements in suspension and debarment proceedings or their effectiveness in improving contractors' behavior. My amendment directs the department's chief procurement officer as the official in charge of the department's suspension and debarment activities to provide this committee and our counterparts in the Senate with information concerning the effectiveness of administrative agreements like the one TSA executed. This committee must ensure the reliability of systems 
employed in the department's critical missions, the trustworthiness of contractors on whom we depend for the procurement of such systems and the effectiveness of the spending authorized by Congress to secure the homeland. With that, Mr. Chairman, I urge members to support my en blanc amendment and yield back. Gentleman yields back. Is there any further discussion on the amendment? There being no further discussion, the question now occurs on the en bloc amendment offered by Mr. Thompson. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed signify by saying no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it, and the en bloc amendment is agreed to. Per the uh, roster agreement listed next on the roster is amendment uh, number 003, offered by the gentleman from Pennsylvania, Mr. Perry. Would the gentleman like to offer his amendment? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I have two amendments listed on the roster and ask unanimous consent that they be considered on block at this time. Without objection, so order. The clerk shall report the on block amendment. On block amendment to H.R. 3572, offered by Mr. Perry. Without objection, the reading is dispensed with. Mr. Perry is recognized for five minutes on his amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The, the two amendments, one is on conference spending. Uh, the amendment requires the CFO to provide oversight of conference spending. There are numerous uh, uh, examples of, of high cost of different conferences regarding an expo in Tampa would be would be one a conference in Rome, Italy for a price tag of six hundred and thirty four thousand or uh, national border enforcement security task force training for a cost of one million. Uh, the amendment was just simply ensure the conference costs are reported to the IG and ensures proper oversight and transparency to the public. The other amendment is regarding testing and evaluation. It ensures that all major acquisition programs, $300 million or above, are con uh, c conduct operational testing and evaluation to ensure tools work before they're sent out to the field. It's just amazing to me that, that we would actually buy this stuff without really having a clue uh, about you know, its efficacy. And, and certainly there are numerous examples. I don't want to bore every, everybody with them, but uh, yeah, I'll just cite one, for example, the DHS deployed the, the CPP, CBP's non-intrusive inspection system and three U.S. Coast Guard acquisitions related to aircraft <coughs> and patrol cutters without completing operational testing and evaluation. I mean, it's a shame that we got to tell them to do this, but I guess if we don't tell them to, uh, what's common sense to you and I uh, apparently is not to, to some other folks. Together, these four programs represented over $76 billion in life cycle costs. Uh, so it just simply requires the DHS to determine if testing from other federal agencies and private entities is both relevant and sufficient in determining whether a system will perform as intended for the department's purpose. Uh, you know, the intent is to save taxpayer dollars if DHS determines that other testing can be conclusively uh, demonstrate, uh, conclusively demonstrates that the system will work rather than testing it again as well. And. Uh, uh, that's my uh, description of the two amendments, and at this point, I yield back. Gentleman yields back. Is there any further discussion uh, on the amendment? Um, it's a very good amendment. Uh, chair uh, certainly supports it. Um, there being no further discussion, the question now occurs on the en bloc amendment offered by Mr. Perry. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed signify by saying no. The uh, amendment uh, is agreed to. The ayes have it. Per the roster agreement uh, listed next is amendment uh, number 282, offered by the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Hurd. Would the gentleman like to offer his amendment? Yes, Mr. Chairman. I have an amendment listed on the roster and ask for its consideration at this time. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> we have a, uh, the clerk shall report the amendment. Amendment to H.R. 3572, offered by Mr. Hurd. Without objection, the reading of the amendment is dispensed with. Mr. Hurd is recognized for five minutes on his amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my amendment helps to clarify the structure of DHS headquarters by establishing a Deputy Undersecretary for Policy to assist the Undersecretary in carrying out required duties. I support this amendment because it denies DHS the opportunity to establish more than one Deputy Undersecretary for Policy. Such a safeguard will help ensure the efficiency and effectiveness of the office. This also requires that the Deputy Undersecretary for Policy be a career employee in order to ensure continuity of operations in the event of a change in leadership and that DHS implement sound policy decisions. I urge my colleagues to support this amendment and I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields back. Is there any uh, further discussion on the amendment? There being no further discussion, the question now occurs on the amendment offered by Mr. Hurd. 
All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed signify by saying no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. The amendment is agreed to. Per the roster agreement uh, listed next is amendment number 002 offered by the gentleman from New Jersey, Mr. Payne. Would the gentleman like to offer his amendment? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, without objection, uh, uh, without objection, so ordered, the clerk shall report the on-block amendment. Amendment to H.R. 3572, off by Mr. Payne. Without objection, the reading of the on-block amendment is dispensed with. Mr. Payne is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, <laughs> to the ranking member. Uh, my on-block amendment is focused on ensuring that small businesses have opportunities to do business with DHS. It does two things. First, it requires DHS to use the data that it collect, uh, collects about the impact of strategic sourcing initiatives on businesses, particularly small businesses, to establish performance measures for strategic sourcing. Second, it would direct GAO to evaluate whether DHS is maximizing small business utilization in acquisitions and in a strategic sourcing contract vehicles. I urge my colleagues to support my amendments and I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields back. Is there any further discussion on the amendment? There being no further discussion, the question now occurs in the on block amendment offered by Mr. Payne. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed signify by saying no. Uh, in the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it, and the amendment uh, is agreed to. Per the roster agreement listed next is amendment number 001, offered by the um, gentlewoman from New Jersey, Ms. Watson Coleman. Would the gentlewoman like to um, offer her amendment? Thank you, yes, Mr. Chairman. I have several amendments listed on the roster, and I ask unanimous consent that these amendments, uh, 001 to 011, be con considered on block at this time. Without objection, so ordered. The clerk shall report the on block amendment. On block amendment to H.R. 3572, offered by Mrs. Watson Coleman. Without objection, the reading of the amendment is dispensed with. Ms. Watson Coleman is recognized for five minutes on her amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate the opportunity to present this on block, which is focused on promoting Secretary Johnson's unity of effort initiative within the department. First, my amendment seeks to reinvigorate the DHS rotation program which was originally authorized under the Homeland Security Act of 2002, but from what we understand is not in use to rotate DHS personnel among components. I believe it can be an effective tool to not only help bring the department together into a cohesive collaborative agency, but also address longstanding morale and retention challenges. Just yesterday, the Office of Personnel Management released the results of the Federal Employee Viewpoint Survey the department once again finished last in employee engagement and satisfaction. The rotation program, by offering personnel the opportunity to be exposed and contribute to day-to-day -day functions, activities, and goals of different components across the agency, holds great potential for fostering a deeper commitment to DHS. Secondly, my amendment directs the secretary to hold component and agency heads accountable for implementing department-wide policies and initiatives. For unity of effort to have meaning, DHS headquarters and components need to collaborate on efforts to execute departmental missions. My amendment would ensure that happens. I urge my colleagues to support my unblock amendment, and I yield back the balance of my time. The gentlewoman yields back. Is there any further discussion on the amendment? There being no further discussion, the question now occurs in the unblock amendment offered by Ms. Watson Coleman. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed signify by saying no. The opinion of the chair, uh, the ayes have it, and the on block agreement is agreed to. Per the roster agreement listed next is amendment number 004, offered by the gentleman from Georgia, Mr. Loudermilk. Would the gentleman like to offer his amendment? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I have an amendment listed on the roster and ask for his consideration at this time. Clerk shall report the amendment. Amendment to H.R. 3572, offering Mr. Loudermilk. Without objection, the reading is dispensed with. Mr. Lowermilk is, is recognized for five minutes on his amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The Counter Narcotics Enforcement Office, whose initial function was to coordinate component counter narcotics efforts, is no longer a functioning unit at the Department of Homeland Security. 
This amendment allows DHS to focus on its critical missions to secure the homeland and eliminates congressional authorization for an office that is no longer used by the department. In addition, other components within DHS have a robust counter-narcotics enforcement efforts. This amendment ensures that the Homeland Security Act, which governs DHS's operations, provides clear and relevant congressional direction. I ask my colleagues to support this amendment, and I now yield back. The gentleman yields back. Is there any further discussion on the amendment? There being no further discussion, the question now occurs on the amendment offered by Mr. Laddermilk. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, signify by saying no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it, and the amendment is agreed to. Per the roster agreement listed next is amendment uh, 004 offered by the gentlewoman from New Jersey, Ms. Watson Coleman. Would the gentlewoman like to offer her amendment? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I do have several amendments listed on the roster, and I ask unanimous consent that amendments 004, 6, 7, 8, and 10 be considered on block at this time. Without objection, so order the clerk shall report the on block amendment. On block amendment to H.R. 3572, offer Mrs. Watson Coleman. Without objection, the reading is dispensed with. Ms. Watson Coleman is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As an original co-sponsor of this legislation, I appreciate this opportunity to offer unblock this series of five amendments to H.R. 3572. Together, they seek to strengthen the acquisition provisions in the underlying bill. Over the years, this committee has repeatedly seen DHS struggle with acquisition management. As introduced, H.R. 3572 it's poised to put DHS on the right path insofar as it holds leaders throughout the department responsible for fully complying with departmental acquisition policies and directives, <coughs> consistent with the reforms under Secretary Johnson's Unity of Effort initiative. My unblock amendment seeks to reinforce and strengthen the underlying bill as follows. First, it directs heads of the components and agencies, such as TSA Customs and Border Protection and FEMA, to check that acquisition program managers actually use their acquisition baselines through all phases of a project. Second, it supports the department's revival of a joint requirements council by making clear that the heads of the DHS component agencies are responsible for not only defining baseline requirements for their programs, but also documenting any changes to those requirements. Third, it bolsters the acquisition review boards as a mechanism for strengthening the integrity and performance of the department's acquisition programs. Fourth, it tightens an oversight provision in the bill calling that by calling on GAO to review the effectiveness of the acquisition review boards as a contributor to acquisition decision making at DHS, particularly at the headquarters level. And finally, Mr. Chairman, my amendment responds to a troubling finding shared with us by GAO this past March. GAO reported that in 2013, over a quarter of the acquisition <coughs> programs required to provide updated cost estimates to Congress were exempted from doing so by the department's then chief acquisition officer. I am pleased that in April, the current DHS leadership recognized that these waivers pose risk not only to the success of this acquisition program, but ultimately the department's ability to carry out its missions my amendment builds upon DHS's recent reforms by adding critical protections to ensure that in the future no such abuses of waiver authority could occur. With that, I urge the adoption of my en blanc and yield the balance of my time. General Woman yields back. Is there any further discussion of the amendment? There being no further discussion, the question now occurs in the en bloc amendment offered by Ms. Watson Coleman. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed signify by saying no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it, and the en bloc amendment is agreed to. Per the roster agreement listed next is amendment uh, number 003, offered by the gentlewoman from Texas, Ms. Jackson Lee. Ms. Jackson Lee is not present, and um, as I understand, the amendment will be offered by the ranking member, Mr. Thompson. Um, the ranking member is recognized. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Ms. Jackson Lee uh, has two amendments listed on the roster and I ask unanimous consent that they be consented on block at this time. Without objection, so order the cl or clerk shall report the on block amendment. On block amendment to H.R. 3572, offered by Mr. Thompson. Without objection, the reading is dispensed with, uh, and Mr. Thompson is recognized for five minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate the opportunity uh, to introduce the, both these amendments on block for consideration. The U.S. Government Accountability Office released a report 
in June of 2015 detailing the lack of specific department-wide priorities for resource and personnel use abroad. Specifically, DHS has not established department-wide strategic priorities for international engagement, a mechanism for monitoring resource deployment abroad, and strategic priorities, and cost data for its programs and activities. This amendment speaks to GAO's recommendation in the report by requiring the Assistant uh, Secretary for International Affairs to advise the Secretary on strategic priorities for overseas deployment, uh, establish a mechanism for monitoring alignment between assets, include personnel with said priorities, and develop a standardized framework to collect and maintain data costs for overseas personnel. My en blanc amendments also make technical changes to the bill regarding the conversion of contractor positions to federal employee positions and requiring <coughs> congressional authorization for adding any new office within the Office of Policy. Uh, with that, uh, Mr. Chairman, I urge support for the uh, Jackson Lee en blanc amendments. And I yield back the balance of my time. Gentleman yields back. Is there any further discussion on the amendment? There being no further discussion, the question now occurs in the en bloc amendment <clears throat> offered by Ms. Jackson Lee. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed signify by saying no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it, and the en bloc amendment is agreed to. There are no additional amendments listed on the roster. Are there any further amendments to the bill? There being no further amendments, the question now occurs on agreeing to the bill H.R. 3572 as amended. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed signify by saying no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it and the bill is agreed to. The question now occurs on reporting the bill H.R. 3572 as amended to the House with a favorable recommendation. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed um, signify by saying no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it and the motion is agreed to. Without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table. Staff is authorized to make any technical and conforming changes. I now call up H.R. 3361, the Department of Homeland Security Insider Threat and Mitigation Act of 2015. The bill was circulated in advance and printed copies are available. The clerk shall designate the bill. H.R. 3361. Without objection, the reading is dispensed with. Uh, the bill is considered read and open to amendment at any point. Uh, the only amendment listed on the roster is an amendment in the nature of a substitute uh, offered by the gentleman um, from uh, New York, Mr. King. Uh, in his absence, uh, Mr. Katko uh, is um, recognized to offer the amendment. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I have an amendment in the nature of a substitute listed on the roster, roster and ask for its consideration at this time. The clerk shall report the amendment. Amendment in the nature of a substitute to H.R. 3361, offered by Mr. Katko. Without objection, the reading is dispensed with, and the amendment in the nature of a substitute shall be considered base text for purposes of amendment. The amendment in the nature of a substitute was noticed to committee members in compliance with the committee rules. Chair now recognizes the gentleman from New York for five minutes to explain the amendment in the nature of a substitute. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Since 9-11, millions of brave Americans have worked tirelessly to protect our nation from another attack. Complicating their difficult jobs has been a threat from within. Trusted individuals have committed traitorous acts causing grave damage to U.S. national security. For example, Private First Class Bradley Manning is serving a 35-year sentence for leaking classified information to WikiLeaks. Edward Snowden continu continues to hide in Russia under the protection of Vladimir Putin as he seeks to escape prosecution for releasing thousands of classified documents on NSA surveillance programs. In 2013, Aaron Alexis, a clear DOD contractor, shot his way into the Washington, D.C. Navy Yard and killed 12 people. These terrible events have spotlighted the need for more rigorous programs to detect insider threats. While none of those programs involve DHS or DHS personnel, all of these individuals were vetted, trusted U.S. security professionals who abused that trust and committed heinous acts. It is critical that more is done to identify potential insider threats that put DHS and its employees at risk. This bill establishes an insider threat program at DHS and provides a foundation for the Secretary to secure DHS facilities and its workforce. 
It creates a steering committee to coordinate insider threat efforts across the department and requires a comprehensive strategy for the department to identify, prevent, mitigate, and respond to insider threats to its critical assets. An important element of any insider threat program is training and employee awareness. The bill requires both to ensure that personnel understood how their use of DHS networks will be monitored, as well as what workplace behavior may be indicative of a potential insider threat. We are considering an amendment in the nature of a substitute for this bill that simply adds a one-time reporting requirement and clarifies definitions within the bill. I urge my colleagues to support this bill, and I yield back, Mr. Chairman. Gentleman yields back. Is there any further discussion on the amendment in the nature of a substitute? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to strike the last word. The ranking member is recognized. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I prepared an amendment for consideration to this bill that sought to clarify the scope of authority that would be granted under H.R. 3361 to the Department. I'm not offering it today, as I understand it would be opposed by the bill's original sponsor, Mr. King, and I do not believe that engaging in a protracted debate would do much to address the insider threat at the Department. However, I want to stress that I support the Department's Homeland Security current insider threat program, which is aimed at preventing and detecting when a person with authorized access to U.S. government resources to include personnel, facilities, information, equipment, networks, and systems uses that access to harm the security of the United States. While I support many aspects of this measure, without the inclusion of language that gives assurances to members of this committee and the Congress <coughs> that the authority granted to DHS in this bill would not be a backdoor for DHS to deploy continuous evaluation, I cannot support H.R. 3361. While I appreciate that the Defense Department and other federal agencies are moving toward putting in place automated systems that on a continuous basis are culling da databases, including social media, to find the proverbial needle in a haystack, I believe we have a responsibility to engage with DHS before granting its authority to deploy such a program. As some of you may know, I am the lead author of the Correct Act, which I introduced with Senator Wyden to make significant reforms in how the federal government manages its classified materials and security clearances processes. That bill appropriately sets a high bar for agencies that want to pursue continuous evaluation. Unfortunately, without clarifying language, H.R. 3361 may be seen as authorizing DHS to move forward before this committee can set forth what our expectations are for such a system. For that reason, Mr. Chairman, I reluctantly oppose H.R. 3361 and yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields back. Is there any further discussion on the amendment in the nature of a substitute? There being no further discussion on the amendment, uh, the committee will move to consideration of the amendments to the amendment in the nature of a substitute. There are no amendments listed on the roster. Are there any amendments to the amendment in the nature of a substitute? There being no amendments to the amendment in the nature of a substitute, the question now occurs on agreeing to the amendment in the nature of substitute to H.R. 3361. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed signify by saying no. No. In the opinion of the chair, <clears throat> the ayes have it and the amendment in the nature of a substitute is agreed to. Question now occurs on reporting H.R. 3361 as amended to the House with a favorable recommendation. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, signify by saying no. No. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it and the motion is agreed to. Without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table and the staff is authorized to make any technical and conforming changes. I now call up H.R. 3505, the Department of Homeland Security Clearance Management and Administration Act. The bill was circulated in advance and printed copies are available. The clerk shall designate the bill. H.R. 3505. Without objection, the first reading is dispensed with and the bill is considered read and open to amendment at any point. The chair now recognizes the gentleman from Mississippi, the ranking member, Mr. Thompson, for five minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, as I mentioned at the outset, 
My bill seeks to take targeted steps at improving critical aspects of how DHS administers its security clearance programs, and I urge members to support it. Uh, with that, I yield back. <clears throat> I appreciate the ranking member's brevity. Um, he yields back. Uh, is there any further discussion on the bill? There being no further discussion of the bill, the committee will move to consideration of amendments. There are no amendments listed on the roster. Are there any amendments to the bill? There being no amendments, the question now occurs on agreeing to the bill, H.R. 3505. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, signify by saying no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it, and the bill is agreed to. The question now occurs on reporting the bill, H.R. 3505, to the House with a favorable recommendation. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, signify by saying no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it, and the motion is agreed to. Without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table, and the staff is authorized to make any technical uh, and conforming changes. I now call up H.R. 3350, the No the CBRN Terrorism Threats to Transportation Act. The bill was circulated in advance, and printed copies are available. The clerk shall designate the bill. H.R. 3350. Without objection, the reading is dispensed with, and the bill is considered read and open to amendment at any point. Chair now recognizes the gentleman from New York, Mr. Higgins, uh, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate the opportunity to consider my bill today. Uh, the Department of Energy plans to begin allowing the transport of highly enriched uranium liquid from Canada to South Carolina next year in trucks. The Department of Energy is relying on an analysis of this route that is outdated and does not reflect the threats we face today. An attack on one of those trucks, or one of these trucks, would, ob would have obvious and devastating consequences. My bill would direct the Department of Homeland Security's Office of Intelligence and Analysis to conduct an assessment of the risks associated with the transportation of chemical, biological, nuclear, and radiological materials. This bill would ensure the Department of Energy has the information it needs when considering the wisdom of transporting dangerous material through high-risk areas throughout the country. I urge my colleagues to support this bill, and I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields back. Is there any further discussion on the bill? <coughs> there being no further discussion on, of the bill, the committee will move to consideration of amendments. There are no mis amendments listed on the roster. Are there any amendments to the bill? <coughs> there being no uh, amendments, a question now occurs on agreeing to the bill, H.R. 3350. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed signify by saying no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it, and the bill is agreed to. Question now occurs on reporting the bill, H.R. 3350, to the House with a favorable recommendation. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed signify by saying no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it, the motion is agreed to. Without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table, and staff is authorized to make any technical uh, and conforming changes. I now call up H.R. 3503, the Department of Homeland Security Support to Fusion Centers Act of 2015. The bill was circulated in advance and printed copies are available. The clerk shall designate the bill. H.R. 3503. Without objection, the reading is dispensed with. The bill is considered read and open to amendment at any point. The chair now recognizes a gentlewoman from Arizona who arrived just in the nick of time, Ms. Uh, McSally, for five minutes to speak on her bill. Yes, Mr. Chairman, that's why they call it a TOT, time over target. <laughs> um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, earlier this month, we remembered the most devastating terrorist attacks carried out by Islamist extremists in our nation's history. As we look back on 9-11 and other attacks like the Boston Marathon bombings and the Fort Hood and Chattanooga shootings, we're constantly reminded we need to continue to break down stovepipes. Ensuring the federal government is sharing intelligence and homeland security information with state and local officials is a vital component to this effort. In June, I visited the Arizona Counterterrorism Intelligence Center, also known as ACTIC. I saw firsthand how fusion centers are disseminating federal threat and intelligence information to, uh, out to emergency responders, and as well as collecting state and local information and fusing it with federal intelligence to enhance terrorist investigations and create a more complete threat picture. As fusion centers continue to mature into a national asset, they are taking a more predominant role in other homeland security missions like border and aviation security as well as emergency response. 
To enhance the nation's ability to detect and prevent terrorist attacks and other emergencies, the ACTIC and 77 other fusion centers across the country need greater access to intelligence information from DHS and its components. H.R. 3503, the Department of Homeland Security Support to Fusion Center Act of 2015, requires the Undersecretary of the Office of Intelligence and Analysis to conduct an assessment of the personnel detailed to fusion centers from INA and other DHS components to assess whether deploying additional personnel will enhance the threat and homeland security information sharing. Additionally, this bill requires the Undersecretary to provide top secret clearances to appropriate state and local analysts in fusion centers and to assess whether access to additional classified material would improve homeland security and information sharing. This bill will help ensure that our state and local law enforcement officers as well as fire and EMS personnel are getting access to the information to protect our communities. Since the summer, our country has been at its highest threat posture since 9-11, given the large number of foreign fighters and ISIS-inspired plots. It's essential that Congress <coughs> ensure all the dots are being connected. I urge all members to support this bill, and I yield back the balance of my time. The gentlewoman yields back. Is there any further discussion on the bill? There being no further discussion, the committee will move to consideration of the amendments on the roster. Listed first is an amendment offered by the gentleman from Georgia, Mr. Lavermilk. Would the gentleman like to offer his amendment? Yes, Mr. Chair. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I have an amendment listed on the roster and ask for its consideration at this time. Without objection, so order the clerk shall report the amendment. Amendment to H.R. 3503, offered by Mr. Loudermilk. Without objection, the reading of the amendment is dispensed with, and Mr. Loudermilk is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This uh, M-Block amendment adds important efficiencies and coordination provisions and complements the underlying bill. We need to make sure that the systems and mechanisms DHS uses to share information and communicate with fusion centers are user-friendly and robust. A key element of this amendment is making sure that DHS components are participating in the information flow to fusion centers. The amendment also addresses the current problem between DHS and fusion centers related to how and when information provided to the department is publicly disclosed. It is long past time that DHS has a memorandum of understanding with each fusion center regarding what information is shared and whether it is subject to public release. I believe this amendment will go a long way in restoring trust between the fusion centers and the department while retaining current transparency <coughs> requirements. I ask my colleagues to support this measure. Thank you, and I now yield back the balance of my time. Gentleman yields back. Is there any further discussion on the en bloc amendment? There being no further discussion, the question now occurs in the en bloc amendment offered by Mr. Loudermilk. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed signify by saying no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it, and the en bloc amendment is agreed to. There are no additional amendments listed on the roster. Are there any further amendments to this bill? There being no further amendments, the question now occurs on agreeing to the bill, H.R. 3503, as amended. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed signify by saying no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. The bill is agreed to. The question now occurs on reporting the bill, 3503, as amended, to the House with a favorable recommendation. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. And all those opposed signify by saying no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. The motion is agreed to. Without objection, the motion reconsiders laid on the table, and staff is authorized to make any technical and conforming changes. I now call up uh, H.R. 3598, the Fusion Center Enhancement Act of 2015. The bill was circulated in advance. Printed copies are available. The clerk shall designate the bill. H.R. 3598. <clears throat> Without objection, the reading is dispensed with. The bill is considered read and open to amendments. The chair now recognizes the gentleman from Pennsylvania, Mr. Barletta, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I introduced H.R. 3598 to clarify and enhance the partnership between the Department of Homeland Security and a national network of fusion centers, uh, making sure that state and local law enforcement, fire, medical, and other emergency personnel have the necessary resources to detect, prevent, and respond to a terrorist or mass casualty incident is a critical part of our homeland security strategy. This includes better access to information and intelligence. After the 9-11 attacks, state and local governments created fusion centers as a way to share federal homeland security information to state and local law enforcement, as well as fuse state and locally collected information <coughs> with federal intelligence. Congress supported this partnership by mandating 
that the Office of Intelligence and Analysis within DHS coordinate with fusion centers. As a former mayor, I know the importance of sharing information between local, state, and federal agencies. I've seen this problem firsthand and know that more can be done to help our local law enforcement get the support they need from the federal government. This bill is one small step to make the fusion centers a better resource for the people who know our communities the best, our local law enforcement officers. While significant progress has been made in this area since 9-11, there continues to be challenges, including making sure first responders have access to vital information, improving access to information and personnel within DHS, and holding DHS accountable for this critical mission. The bill before us addresses these issues in several ways. The first eight responsibilities listed in the legislation addresses how information is shared with state and local stakeholders. It directs DHS to make sure its components are providing information and personnel to fusion centers to better cooperate with state and local officials. And it requires DHS to coordinate with fusion centers and state homeland security advisors in carrying out assigned responsibilities. Finally, the bill requires DHS to submit a report to Congress on its efforts to meet its requirements set forth in this bill. The relationship between state and local fusion centers and the federal government needs to be a partnership, and that partnership must expand to include jurisdictions in nearby communities. I urge my colleagues to support this bill so that we can add important requirements and accountability in how the Department of Homeland Security interacts and shares information with key state and local stakeholders. Gentleman yields back. Is there any further discussion on the bill? There being no further discussion, the committee will move to consideration of the amendments on the roster. The only amendment listed on the roster is an amendment offered by the gentleman from Massachusetts, Mr. Keating. Would the gentleman like to offer his amendment? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I do have an amendment on the, on the roster and would like it to be considered at this time. Clerk shall report the amendment. Amendment to H.R. 3598, offered by Mr. Keating. Without objection, the reading of the amendments dispensed with. Uh, Mr. Keating is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll try and uh, edit out my statement to save some time. Uh, but <laughs> Chair appreciates that. But it's also uh, something that uh, this committee and, and Chair and I in particular have been working on for a long time to follow up. Uh, I want to thank the gentleman, uh, Representative Barletta, for his work uh, on this important piece of legislation dealing with national network and fusion centers. As you know, they're the network, they're the pulse, uh, providing the information on a daily basis between federal, state, and local law enforcement authorities. And uh, the work they do is, is extraordinary. In fact, uh, on a daily basis, they're working to prevent and thwart uh, the threats of bad actors uh, throughout our, our nation, uh, and their work is to be uh, congratulated and uh, applauded. Yet, intelligence sharing among federal and local partners hasn't always been as effective as it could be. And as we learned with the Boston Marathon bombings in 2013, local law enforcement was not given all the information federal law enforcement had regarding the Sarnayev brothers. Uh, as a result, I, I included in the intelligence uh, uh, authorization language uh, that would require the Undersecretary of Intelligence and Analysis to provide an intelligence assessment of the efficacy of the memorandums of understanding, the MOUs, signed by federal, state, and local officials. You know, the, the administrations change, personnel change, but the MOUs stay, and it's important that that information uh, be passed down and reflected upon, and, and it's precisely from th those recommendations that I drafted the amendment today, and those recommendations came in concert with uh, detailed uh, consultation of DHS and the FBI. So this amendment ensures that the Undersecretary of Intelligence and Analysis negotiates MOUs between the department and the state and local government regarding exchanges of information and sets forth the parameters to be included in the MOU. <coughs> it includes uh, requiring categories of information, uses of the exchange information, developing joint products, a dispute resolution process, uh, and also uh, making sure that they conform to local and federal law. And uh, this sounds uh, very technical, but the end result will be that future breakdowns uh, like we had with the Boston Marathon bombing going forward 
will not occur. Uh, it's an important amendment in this regard. It's, I think, uh, the last step that we have here prior to the implementation of these uh, foreign law enforcement and moving forward with the kind of information that keeps our nation safe. With that, I yield back. Gentleman yields back. <clears throat> Is there any further discussion uh, on the amendment? Um, we uh, say that I support the amendment, uh, and the, Mr. Keating and I have worked very hard uh, after the Boston Marathon attacks to try to uh, have lessons learned to better protect Americans. I appreciate the hard work you have done, sir, uh, for the people of Boston and the American people. Uh, there being no further discussion, the question now occurs on the amendment offered by Mr. Keating. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed signify by saying no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it and the amendment is agreed to. There are no additional amendments listed on the roster. Are there any further amendments to the bill? There being no further amendments, the question now occurs in agreeing to the bill, H.R. 3598, as amended. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed signify by saying no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. The bill is agreed to. The question now occurs in rep reporting the bill, H.R. 3598, as amended, to the House with a favorable recommendation. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. And all those opposed signify by saying no. In the, in the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. The motion is agreed to. Without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table. Staff is authorized to make any technical and conforming changes. I now call up uh, H.R. 3586, the Border and Maritime Coordination Improvement Act. The bill was circulated in advance and printed copies are available. The clerk shall designate the bill. H.R. 3586. Without objection, the reading is dispensed with. Uh, listed first on the roster is an amendment in the nature of a substitute offered by the gentlewoman from Michigan, Ms. Miller. Does the gentlewoman wish to offer her amendment? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I have an amendment in the nature of a substitute listed on the roster, and I ask for its consideration at this time. The clerk shall report the amendment in the nature of a substitute. <clears throat> amendment in the nature of a substitute to H.R. 3586, offered Mrs. Miller. Without objection, the reading is dispensed with, and the amendment in the nature of substitute shall be considered base text for purposes of amendment. The amendment in the nature of substitute was noticed to committee members in compliance with the rules. The chair now recognizes the gentlewoman, gentlewoman from Michigan for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And the bill that we're considering today, the Border and Maritime Coordination Improvement Act, H.R. 3586, is pretty simple. It provides the DHS tools and the authority to find efficiencies to better streamline logistics and operations among all of their components. In 2003, the DHS was created from 22 different agencies and offices, so it shouldn't be uh, surprising that there would be significant growing pains, and, uh, and that has been certainly the case. More than 12 years later, DHS is still more like a holding company for those 22 offices and agencies than really a unified department. Each component of the department, whether it be CBP or ICE or the Coast Guard, has a tendency to operate in its own silo, really without coordination required to make border and maritime security efforts as successful as they need to be. This has certainly had a negative effect on logistics, communications, and most importantly, on their operations. So in an attempt to better adopt a structure uh, with the goal of enhancing border and maritime security operations, Secretary Johnson actually is taking a page from DOD, uh, not surprising given his work there, and he's created three joint task forces. Two of these task forces, the JTF East and West, are geographically based. By one of them, the investigations is a functional task force. This bill provides explicit authority to guide task force operations and allow this pilot concept to be utilized for one purpose, and that's to secure the international borders of the United States. And while this concept is certainly not novel, it, this a bill also provides a sunset date, which gives the next administration the opportunity to come back to this committee, to the Congress, and to demonstrate that this uh, is working, actually. The second part of the bill requires the department to take a hard look at the potential efficiencies in its maritime security efforts. And uh, Ranking Member Vila and I recently held a hearing with CBP that addressed some of the overlap uh, and some of the redundancies that we thought we found in the maritime environment. So in this bill, we're providing the framework for CBP's Office of Field Operations, the Office of Air and Marine, and also the Coast Guard really to evaluate their role in the maritime and supply chain security uh, missions, and then ensure that their missions are consistent with their current threats. Additionally, the bill requires these components to uh, co collaborate and to find ways to consolidate, streamline, uh, wherever possible. So we think this is uh, common sense. 
And lastly, the bill authorizes the Department's Office of Biometric Identity Management, or OBIM, for the first time since 2003. Mr. Chairman, biometrics have been a very important part of our nation's border security efforts. And today we collect biometrics on a large number of foreign travelers, on refugees, visa holders, and we match their fingerprints against our criminal and defense and immigration <coughs> holdings. OBIM is the agency responsible for the matching, storing, and sharing of this very, very important biometric data and operating the principal uh, database as well in the federal government. So the work that they're doing keeps our borders secure every day, and we think that uh, this is a very important part as well. Obviously, our borders can be secured. They must be secured. And uh, we think that this bill provides a very important step forward for the Department to be organized for success and to improve the coordination as well, not just of the border, but also the maritime <coughs> security components as well. And I would just say uh, that I want to thank Ranking Member Vila and his staff uh, very much for working so closely with us on what we think is a common sense bill. bill. I yield back the balance of my time. The gentlewoman uh, yields back. Is there any further discussion on the amendment in the nature of a substitute? Uh, let me say I support this amendment. I want to thank the gentlewoman, gentle lady, and uh, Mr. Vela for your hard work on this amendment. Um, it uh, I think will go a long ways towards uh, uh, securing our border, which is desperately needed. Uh, there being no further discussion uh, of the amendment in the nature of a substitute, the committee will move to consideration of the amendments to the amendment in the nature of a substitute listed on the roster. Listed next is an amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute offered by the gentlewoman from California, Ms. Sanchez. In her absence, um, Mr. Thompson is recognized to offer the amendment. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. And I offer uh, these four amendments en blanc on behalf of Ms. Sanchez. Uh, these en blanc amendments, uh, Amendment 958, a man's current law to reflect. If, if, uh, if a gentleman, uh, a gentleman would yield, with, without objection, so ordered, the clerk shall report the en bloc amendment. En bloc amendment to the amendment in the nature of substitute to H.R. 3586, offered by Mr. Thompson. Without objection, the reading is dispensed with in the en bloc amendment, and Mr. Thompson is recognized for five minutes. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. I took you at your word. We're trying to get it done. <laughs> uh, uh, again, I offer these amendments en bloc on behalf of Ms. Sanchez. Amendment 958 amends current law to reflect the current name of the agency, U.S. Customs and Border Protection. Amendment 954 <laughs> requires a st strategic plan for CBP personnel deployed outside the U.S. to ensure appropriate oversight and support of personnel in support of program goals. Amendment 953 authorizes CBP Immigration Advisory Program on which CBP personnel are posted at a host country's airport during processing of flights bound for the United States and review traveler information for inadmissibility and security issues. Amendment 957 <coughs> requires a security threat assessment of U.S. bound international mail. These provisions further strengthen an already robust bill, and I urge my colleagues to support the en blanc amendments and yield back the balance of my time. Gentleman yields back. Is there any further discussion on the en bloc amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute? There being no further discussion, the question now occurs on the en bloc amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute uh, offered by Ms. Sanchez. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed signify by saying no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it, and the en bloc amendment uh, in the nature of a substitute uh, is agreed to. Listed next on the roster is an amendment to the amendment in the nature of substitute offered by the gentleman from New York, Mr. Katko. Would the gentleman like to offer his amendment? Yes, Mr. Chairman. I have an amendment at the desk. The clerk shall report the amendment. Amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute to H.R. 3586, offered by Mr. Katko. Without objection, the reading is dispensed with, and Mr. Katko is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This amendment would authorize in statute a successful model for cross-border collaboration between the United States and Canada known as the Integrated Border Enforcement Team, or IBET. In this scarce budget environment, Congress should look to proven methods of border security. Joint collaboration, coordination, and interdiction programs are especially valuable in the northern border, where by last count, the GAO found that only 2% or 69 miles was considered to be under operational control. As a prosecutor for 20 years and 16 years along the northern border, I've, I've worked with the IBET teams on a regular basis, and I know that they work. Established in 2001, this, pro this IBET program enhances border integrity and security 
by integrating Royal Canadian Mounted Police and Customs and Border Protection, as well as the Canadian Border Services Agency, Immigration and Customs Enforcement, and the Coast Guard through joint interdiction efforts. The coordination and, co and collaboration between these agencies further increases effectiveness. However, the program has never been officially authorized. My amendment would codify this program and demonstrate our country's commitment to work with our foreign partners. The IBET program provides vital support to the counterterrorism efforts of both Canada and the U.S., as well as cross-border drug interdiction. By passing this amendment, we can complement Canadian border resources, close existing gaps along the border, and increase interoperability with the RCMP. Uh, ICE-led best teams and the Coast Guard's Shiprider program, which are already authorized in federal statute, are additional collaborative and effective tools used. Combined, all three program, programs provide critical ability to our heroic border agents and officers. The Secretary of Homeland Security is also given the authority to ensure that there is no duplication of effort between these programs, further increasing responsi responsible use of taxpayer money. Mm -hmm. Lastly, included in my amendment is a reporting requirement to ensure effectiveness and assessment on sustainment of this program. I ask that all my colleagues support my amendment and thank Chairman McCall <coughs> for his leadership and Subcommittee Chairwoman Miller for her shared interest in advocating for the northern border. I also thank Mr. Vella. I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields back. Is there any further discussion on the amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute? Uh, Ms. Miller is recognized. Just a very quick comment, Mr. Chairman. I want to thank Mr. Katko for offering this amendment, and uh, we've talked at length about northern border. Uh, Mr. Higgins and, and I have talked at length as well. I have the second busiest border crossing on the northern tier in my district. He has the third. We go back and forth sometimes about who's got the second and the third. But anyway, uh, the northern border security is really of uh, utmost importance, and this committee spends a lot of time talking about the southern border, and believe me, I'm not minimizing the problems that we have at the southern border, but we have some very unique dynamics on the northern border. And uh, I'm, I'm always uh, uh, hopeful that uh, not just our committee, but the Congress, the country, spend some more time thinking about what could be coming across the northern border with the dynamics that we have uh, there as well. So very important. You mentioned the shiprider. That actually had its genesis uh, really as a, uh, a cooperative uh, effort between ourselves and the Canadians when Detroit hosted the Super Bowl along the, that whole area. So it, these, some of these uh, uh, items that you point out in your amendment are extremely important, and I, I would just make that comment. Thank you. Joe Lee yields back. Is there any uh, further discussion on the amendment? I would like to associate myself with the remarks of the General Lee from Michigan. Um, we, I come from a southern border state, and I focus a lot on that issue. I, but I do believe that given the ISIS connection to the UK and French, uh, the presence of that in Canada, uh, the proximity to New York City uh, is, is uh, concerning. And I think we do need to focus on both the northern and southern border. So with that, um, and there being no further discussion, the question now occurs on the amendment to the amendment in the nature of substitute offered by Mr. Katko. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, signify by saying no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. The amendment to the amendment in the nature of substitute is agreed to. Listed next on the roster is an amendment to the amendment in the nature of substitute offered by the gentleman from New Jersey, Mr. Payne. Would the gentleman like to offer his amendment? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I have an amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute at the desk. The clerk shall report the amendment to the amendment Amem in the nature of a substitute. Amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute to H.R. 3586, offered by Mr. Payne. Without objection, the reading of the amendments dispensed with. Mr. Payne is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my amendment intends to help U.S. Customs and Border Protection, CPP, mm -hmm and the Transportation Security Administration, TSA, to continue to partner with industry to better secure U.S. bound air cargo. Under the current law, air, car air carriers are required to transmit a manifest data on the air cargo shipments bound for the U.S. to CPB, but after departure. In 2010, authorities discovered two U.S. bound packages from Yemen containing bombs capable of bringing down an aircraft. In response to this attempt, attempted terrorist attack, <coughs> CPB and TSA, working with industry, established the Air Cargo Advanced Screening, ACAS. Pilot, it was a pilot project to allow participating air carriers to provide manifest data prior to loading onto U.S.-bound aircraft. 
the agencies use this information to target inbound cargo shipments that might be high risk so that the security concerns can be resolved prior to departure. My amendment would authorize the ACAS system and encourage CPB and TSA to continue working with industry to enhance the system and facilitate the secure and efficient flow of air cargo into the United States. I encourage my colleagues to support my amendment, and I yield back the balance of my time. Uh, the gentleman uh, yields uh, back. Uh, is there any further discussion on the amendment to the amendment the nature of a substitute? There being no further discussion, uh, the question now occurs on the amendment to the amendment the nature of a substitute offered by Mr. Payne. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed signify by saying no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it, and the amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute is agreed to. Listed next on the roster is an amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute offered by the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Hurd. Would the gentleman like to offer his amendment? I do indeed, Mr. Chairman. I have two amendments listed on the roster and ask unanimous consent, uh, consent that they be considered in block at this time. Without objection, so ordered, the clerk shall report the on block amendment. On block amendment to the amendment in the nature of substitute to H.R. 3586, offered by Mr. Hurd. Without objection, the reading uh, of the on block amendments dispensed with. Mr. Hurd is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My first in the en blanc package, HERD 017, would require the Secretary to establish performance me metrics to evaluate the effectiveness of the Joint Task Forces and to annually assess their performance against those metrics. It would also require the Department to submit the metrics to the appropriate congressional committees. The Joint Task Forces authorized in this bill serve as an important first step in creating unity of effort throughout the Department of Homeland Security. While it is my hope that these Joint Task Forces are successful in improving security of our borders, it remains to be seen whether or not this effort will be successful. The Joint Task Forces are still in their infancy, and this bill sunsets the JTF author authorization in 2018, requiring the, the Department to prove their effectiveness. In order to evaluate the JTFs, the department must have objective performance metrics on which to identify the successes and failures of the program and its structure. The second amendment in this en blanc package is HERD 016. It formally authorizes a public-private partnership program within U.S. Customs and Border, and border Protection. Since January 2014, the public-private partnership pilot program ran through Customs and Border Protection has enhanced the ability of CBP to increase resources and decrease wait times at ports of entry. This program provides guidance for reimbursable services and allows CBP to tailor its services to the needs of stakeholders while meeting the demands associated with the decreasing budgets. Both CBP and stakeholders have been exceedingly pleased with the results of this pilot program. This bill permanently authorizes the public-private partnership program for reimbursable services and donation authority in the law and establishes a framework to guide its implementation. I urge my colleagues to support these en blanc amendments. I yield back the balance of my time. Gentleman yields back. Is there any fur further discussion on the en bloc amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Bartolet is recognized. Thank you for yielding. Uh, Mr. Hurd, first I, I, let me recognize your leadership on, uh, on this issue and say that I am a strong supporter of public-private partnerships as a way to help build and staff border station facilities. Uh, the need for increasing capacity on the southern border is great, yet given the size of our deficit, federal funds are limited. I share your goal of using public-private partnerships on the border. However, I do have a few concerns about the amendment. Uh, two years ago, as chairman of the Public Buildings Subcommittee, I helped the Appropriations Committee create a pilot program authorizing GSA and CBP to accept donations and charge fees to expand border inspection facilities. <clears throat> we were very careful to preserve GSA's responsibility for managing the real estate and CBP's for staffing the facilities. Uh, there is no need to divert CBP's time and resources from securing the border to managing real estate. In fact, there is a long list of federal agencies that have wasted billions of dollars mismanaging federal property while failing to perform their primary missions. Uh, the Veterans Affairs Department and the Securities and Exchange Commission are just two of the most recent examples of billion dollar disasters because they don't understand real estate. We should not add CBP to that list. Uh, GSA owns or leases every major border station in the country. 
and we don't need to change that in order to have public-private partnerships finance new facilities. CBP should stay focused on securing the border and let GSA worry about the buildings. Uh, I look forward to working with you and the committee to address these issues as the bill moves through the legislative process. Thank you. Is there any further discussion on the amendment? Ms. Miller is recognized. Yes, and Mr. Chairman, uh, first of all, I, I want to uh, also uh, thank Mr. Hurd for his leadership on this issue. We've uh, talked about this uh, a bit, and, and I'm, I'm very supportive of uh, both of his amendments. I also want to comment on Mr. Barletta's uh, uh, comments because uh, he and I both were on the special panel for P3s on the uh, Transportation Infrastructure Committee. So we're huge supporters of P3s, and with the limited resources, uh, our, our country has to uh, look at doing that in, in all kinds of uh, areas. And, and certainly coming from local government, as Mr. Barletta and I both do, we, we recognize that. I would just say this. Our subcommittee actually has had uh, several hearings with CBP about the criteria that they are currently utilizing to determine where they're going to make a recommendation within the President's budget for infrastructure improvements at these ports of entries, these plazas, et cetera, which in my mind uh, is not very good criteria right now. They really are not looking at the uh, critical nature of uh, uh, which are the busiest crossings, where, these, uh, where this uh, money should be spent, as it is so limited. So we've had a hearing about that. I intend to have some more about it. But this amendment really doesn't talk about that. This amendment is really talking about how um, stakeholders can uh, use uh, additional officers funded uh, via overtime through reimbursable agreements. And uh, again, that personal property could be donated to CBP at the uh, POEs uh, to speed uh, trade and commerce uh, through those uh, uh, those uh, POEs that really power our economy, obviously. So, again, I'm uh, very uh, uh, interested in P3s. Uh, on the other hand, I think that these uh, two amendments are uh, excellent amendments. I would be in support of them. Could only yield any further discussion on the amendment. Mr. Hurd is recognized. Um, I appreciate um, both of my colleagues' comments on this. And, and in conversations we've had with CBP and, and other stakeholders, um, all parties agree the intent is not to expand CBP's role in, in real property, and I look forward um, to working with the TNI committee staff and, and the gentleman from Pennsylvania on working out these details um, before this um, goes to, to the floor. I Gen yield gentleman yields back. Is there any further discussion on the amendment? There being no further discussion, the question now occurs on the on block amendment to the amendment and the nature of a substitute offered by Mr. Hurd. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed signify by saying no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it, and the en bloc amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute is agreed to. Listed next on the roster is an amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute offered by the gentlewoman from Arizona, Ms. McSally. Would the gentlewoman like to offer her amendment? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I have two amendments listed on the roster and ask unanimous consent they be considered en bloc at this time. Without objection, so ordered, the clerk shall report the en bloc amendment. En bloc amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute to H.R. 3586, offered by Ms. McSally. Without objection, the reading is dispensed with. Ms. McSally is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. These en bloc amendments provide additional structure to the authorization of the DHS Joint Task Forces. My First Amendment, McSally 952, would require the Secretary to develop a training program for the workforce assigned to the Department's Joint Task Forces. The instruction required for this program will be focused on strategy development and coordination for joint border security operations, organizational leadership, and homeland security enterprise. DHS can learn for how, from how the Department of Defense transitioned to a similar joint command structure as part of the Goldwater Nichols Department of Defense Reorganization Act in 1986. I'm personally very familiar with this and the joint training that we go through in the military and think this could be a good model for DHS. A major reason for success of joint operations was the DOD requirement to formally educate and cross-train members of different components and branches to facilitate the smooth execution of joint operations. The Joint Task Force structure authorizing this legislation requires joint operations to accomplish border security missions. This amendment will better prepare personnel to serve in the Joint Task Force and to collaborate in such a joint environment. Having commanded the 354th Fighter Squadron and flown the A-10 in combat, I fully understand the need for all operators in a joint command to be on the same page. This amendment is the first step in coordinating a truly joint capability as part of the Joint Task Force. It will assure a greater unity of effort. Joint duty training for both senior <laughs> level leadership and mid-level officers and officials will provide the foundation necessary for these joint task forces to succeed. Not only will the training better prepare DHS personnel to conduct more efficient border security operations, it will also develop a large talent pool of qualified personnel to lead such joint commands in the future. My second amendment, McSally 051, requires the Inspector General 
the IG of Department of Homeland Security, to review the effectiveness of the Joint Task Force in securing the international borders of the U.S. and report the findings to Congress. The Joint Task Force model is new to the Department of Homeland Security. We in Congress have a responsibility to ensure that DHS is efficiently meeting its goals and objectives while streamlining operations through Joint Command. While I believe the structure for Joint Task Forces will increase border security and unity of effort, it has been created in the image of the Department of Defense. I want to ensure such a command structure also works for a law enforcement-centric DHS and is truly optimizing our border security efforts. The IG's assessment of effectiveness will help inform Congress and the American people if these joint task forces are working and should continue moving forward. My amendment would require the DHS IG to provide recommendations on improving the joint task forces <coughs> to become more efficient and effective, and most importantly, to further strengthen our border security. I urge my colleagues to support these unblock amendments and yield back the balance of my time. Gentlewoman yields back. Is there any further discussion on the on block amendment? There being no further discussion, the question now occurs in the on block amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute offered by Ms. McSally. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed signify by saying no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. The on block amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute is agreed to. Listed next on the roster is an amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute offered by the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Vela. Would the gentleman like to offer his amendment? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. I have an amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute at the desk. The clerk shall report the amendment. Amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute to H.R. 3586. Offer Mr. Vela. <clears throat> Without objection, the reading is dispensed with. Mr. Vela is recognized for five minutes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I too would like to thank Mrs. Miller for her hard work on this uh, bipartisan uh, effort. Uh, and my amendment today requires that U.S. Customs and Border Protection submit to Congress annually a report on its staffing model for the Office of Field Operations, including information on how many supervisors, frontline CBP officers, agriculture specialists, and support personnel are assigned to each field office and port of entry. A similar provision was included in the CBP authorization that passed by the House earlier this Congress. CBP's ports of entry continue to be short-staffed, lacking the number of officers, agricultural specialists, and support staff necessary to secure the ports appropriately while facilitating legitimate trade and travel. We know that CBP continues to struggle to hire the additional 2,000 CBP officers funded by Congress. My amendment will ensure that this committee has a thorough understanding of CBP staffing needs to inform our oversight and authorization activities and help address shortages. I urge my colleagues to support this amendment, and I yield back the balance of my time. Gentleman yields back. Is there any further discussion on the amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute? There being no further discussion, the question now occurs on the amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute offered by Mr. Vela. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed signify by saying no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it, and the amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute is agreed to. There are no additional amendments listed on the roster. Are there any Mr. further amendments to Mr. the Chairman, amendment in the nature oh. of substitute? Mr. Mr. Richmond's recognized. Mr. Chairman, I have an amendment at the desk. The clerk shall report. Amendment to the amendment in the nature of substitute to H.R. 3586, offering Mr. Richmond. Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Katko is recognized. I'll reserve a point of order on the gentleman's amendment. The gentleman reserves a point of order without objection. The reading of the amendment is dispensed with, uh, and Mr. R Richmond is recognized for five minutes. Mr. Chairman, uh, my amendment is simple. It charges the Secretary with giving Congress information on the speed of the appeals process for TWIC card applicants. The reason for the delays that occur and recommendations for improvements that can be made. The TWIC card is a requirement for jobs across the country. The jobs that require it are often well-paying jobs that allow people who work hard to support themselves and their families. Workers rely on the TWIC program to be eligible for these jobs and companies rely on the TWIC program to ensure they're hiring qualified people. In my district, we know how important the TWIC cards are. With one of the largest and busiest port complexes in the world and the largest petrochemical footprint in the nation, having a TWIC process that works is essential to our economy and our safety. However, workers who have been released from prison, <clears throat> even for minor offenses, are missing out on opportunities because of an appeals process that takes longer than companies can wait to fill an opening, even when the workers ultimately qualify for a TWIC card. If someone is skilled and qualified, a long and complicated process should not keep them from working. We should not let the government stand in the way of people supporting their families and contributing to their communities. 
My amendment asks DHS to tell us how the process is working and what can be done to improve it because we owe the American people a government that works. And it is our job as their representatives to ensure that these programs are working as efficiently as possible. And I would yield back. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Chairman yields um, back. Is there any further dis uh, discussion on the amendment? There being, there being no further discussion, does the gentleman insist on his uh, point of order? Mr. Chairman, I, I withdraw my point of order. The gentleman uh, withdraws his point of order. The question now occurs on the amendment offered um, by Mr. Richmond. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, signify by saying no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it and the amendment is agreed to. There being no further discussion, the question now occurs in the amendment to the amendment in the nature of substitute offered by Mr. Richmond. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed signify by saying no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it, and the amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute is agreed to. Are there any further amendments to the amendment in the nature of a substitute? There being no further amendments, the question now occurs on agreeing to the amendment in the nature of a substitute to H.R. 3586 as amended. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed signify by saying no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it, and the amendment in the nature of a substitute as amended is agreed to. The question now occurs in reporting H.R. 3586 as amended to the House with a favorable recommendation. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. And all those opposed signify by saying no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it, and the motion is agreed to. Without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table. Staff is authorized to make any technical uh, and conforming uh, changes. I now call up uh, H.R. 3583, the PREPARE Act. The bill was circulated in advance, and printed copies are available. The clerk shall designate the bill. H.R. 3583. Without objection, the reading is dispensed with and the bill is considered read and open to amendment at any point. The gentleman, uh, woman from Arizona, Ms. McSally, is recognized for five minutes on the bill. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. September's National Preparedness Month. As we urge all Americans to take steps to enhance their preparedness, it's fitting that the committee is meeting this morning to mark up the PREPARE Act, bipartisan legislation to help ensure federal, state, and local governments are prepared to respond to the threats we face. The PREPARE Act seeks to enhance accountability at the Federal Emergency Management Agency, Office of Emergency Communications, and Office of Health Affairs at DHS. This act builds efficiencies and increases coordination for preparedness improvements while providing greater accountability for the taxpayers. This text has been informed through our subcommittee hearings and meetings, as well as discussions with the minority, various offices within the Department of Homeland Security and the Government Accountability Office and the DHS Inspector General and other relevant stakeholders. I want to thank Ranking Member Payne and his staff for working with me and my staff on the legislation, and I urge all members to join us in supporting this common sense bipartisan bill. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back. Joe Woman yields back. Is there any further discussion on the bill? Is there any further discussion on the bill? Okay. There being no further discussion of the bill, the committee will move to consideration of the amendments on the roster. Per the roster agreement listed first is an amendment offered by the gentleman from New Jersey, Mr. Payne. Would the gentleman like to offer his amendment? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I have five amendments listed on the roster, and I ask unanimous consent that they be considered on block at this time. Without objection, so order the clerk shall report the on block amendment. On block amendment to H.R. 3583, offered by Mr. Payne. Without objection, the reading is dispensed with. Mr. Payne is recognized for five minutes. Mr. Chairman, my on block amendment is comprised of five amendments that make important improvements to H.R. 3583. First, it would ensure that grantees choosing to spend Homeland Security grant dollars on systems and equipment have in place a plan to maintain the equipment that they purchase with the federal grant dollars. From, pers from personnel, protective equipment, to communication systems, regular maintenance is necessary to ensure that the equipment purchased works properly for its expected life cycle. Second, it would build on DHS's Interoperable Communications Act 
which was enacted into law earlier this year to ensure that all DHS radio users receive initial and ongoing training, particularly on how to access DHS common channels. Third, it would ensure that the unique needs of children <clears throat> are appropriately integrated into emergency response activities. From, from 2009 to 2012, FEMA had a, a children's needs coordinator and a children's working group, but at the beginning of this year, neither existed. In March of 2015, FEMA's National Advisor, Advisory Council recommended that FEMA establish a permanent technical expert within the agency to focus on the needs of children in a disaster. FEMA concurred with the recommendation and the administrator, administrator Fugate designated an employee to serve as a technical expert on children's issues. My amendment would have formally, would formally authorize the, exist, the existing position. Fourth, my amendment addresses stakeholder concerns about the lack of a formal process for approving grantee requests to use Homeland Security dollars uh, on equipment that is not authorized equip on the authorized equipment list. And finally, my amendment further clarifies the role of the chief medical officer in law. I understand that the committee expects to consider legislation later this fall to consolidate certain offices with missions related to weapons of mass destruction, including the Office of Health Affairs, which is headed by the chief medical officer. My amendment makes clear that the chief medical officer is responsible for advising the secretary directly on how to prepare for, mitigate against, and respond to medical effects of chemical, biological, radiological, or, no, or a nuclear event. I thank the chairman and his staff for working with me on this on block amendment, and I urge my colleagues to support, and I yield back the balance of my time. Gentleman yields back. Is there any further discussion of the amendment? There being no further discussion, the question now occurs in the on block amendment offered by Mr. Payne. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, signify by saying no. The opinion of the chair, the ayes have it, and the on block amendment uh, is agreed to. There are no uh, additional, hold on a second. Per the roster agreement, next is an amendment offered by the gentleman from Mississippi, Mr. Thompson. Would the gentleman like to offer his amendment? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, I have two amendments listed on the roster and ask unanimous consent that they be consented en blanc at this time. Without objection, so order the clerk shall report the amendment. En bloc amendment to H.R. 3583, offer Mr. Thompson. Without objection, the reading is dispensed with. Mr. Thompson is recognized for five minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, my en blanc amendment is comprised of two amendments to improve the PREPARE Act. First, it addresses the oversight findings of this committee into the Boston Marathon bombings response and seeks to improve how the federal government serves the first responders who bravely protect our community. Uh, secondly, uh, uh, my own Blanc Amendment requires the administrator to enter into a memorandum of agreement with the department's Office for Civil Rights and Civil Liberties. That agreement would ensure that grant funds administered by FEMA are spent by state and local governments and law enforcement in a manner that protects the individual rights and freedoms we cherish. Before I close, I want to commend subcommittee uh, chairperson <coughs> McSally and ranking member Payne Jr. for their bipartisan efforts to authorize important federal preparedness and response programs. I urge my colleagues to support my en blanc amendments and I yield back the balance of my time. Gentleman yields back. Is there any further discussion on the en bloc amendment? There being no further discussion, the question now occurs on the en bloc amendment offered by Mr. Thompson. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed signify by saying no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it, and the en bloc amendment uh, is agreed to. Are there any further amendments to be offered? There being no further amendments, the question now occurs <coughs> on agreeing to the bill HR 3583 as amended. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. 
All those opposed signify by saying no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. The bill is agreed to. The question now occurs on reporting the bill. H.R. 3583 is amended to the House with a favorable recommendation. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed signify by saying no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. The motion is agreed to. Uh, without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table and staff is authorized to make any technical and conforming changes. I now call up H.R. 3584, the Transportation Security Administration Reform and Improvement Act of 2015. The bill was circulated in advance and printed copies are available. The clerk shall designate the bill. H.R. 3584. Uh, without objection, the uh, reading is dispensed with and the bill is considered read and open to amendment at any point. The gentleman from New York, Mr. Katko, is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the TSA Reform and Improvement Act of 2015 is a critically important piece of legislation which aims to accomplish a number of committee oversight priorities for TSA, including prioritizing the pre-check program, advancing risk-based security, enhancing aviation worker vetting, and enhancing the state of airports uh, screening technologies. Uh, I, there's an additional statement I have here, but in the interest of brevity, I'll submit that statement for the record and uh, yield back to the chairman. With, and without objection, so order the gentleman yields back. Is there any further discussion on the bill? There being uh, no further discussion on the bill, the committee will move to consideration of the amendments on the roster. Per the roster agreement listed first is an amendment offered by the gentleman from Mississippi. Mr. Thompson, would the gentleman like to offer his amendment? Uh, yes, Mr. T uh, chairman, I have two amendments listed on the roster and act unanimous consent that they be considered en bloc. Without objection, so order the clerk shall report the amendment. En bloc amendment to H.R. 3584, offered by Mr. Thompson. Without objection, the reading is dispensed with and Mr. Thompson is recognized for five minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, my en bloc amendment seeks to address two important areas within this legislation. The First Amendment deals with expedited screening. The underlying bill gives the administrator 180 days to limit access to expedited screening to only those passengers who have previously been vetted through the use of biographic or biometric information or those deemed trusted travelers by the administrator. My amendment would strike this 100-day period, thereby requiring the administrator to make the changes immediately. The TSA has already begun the process of winding down the program that both the GAO and Department's Inspector General have identified as having security vulnerabilities. The Second Amendment is responsive to the results of recent covert testing, indicating better detection technology is necessary and seeks to help Administrator Neffinger get innovative security technologies in the field. My amendment calls for TSA to determine the feasibility of helping to support the commercialization of innovative technologies through existing venture capital models such as Incotel. Uh, I ask the committee to support my en blanc amendment and yield back. Gentleman yields back. Is there any further discussion uh, on the en bloc amendment? There being no further discussion, the question now occurs in the en bloc amendment offered by Mr. Thompson. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed signify by saying no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it and the amendment is agreed to. Per the roster agreement uh, listed next is an amendment offered by the gentleman from Pennsylvania, uh, Mr. Perry. Would the gentleman like to offer his amendment? Yes, Mr. Chairman. I have an amendment listed on the roster and ask that it be considered at this time. Clerk shall report the amendment. Amendment to H.R. 3584, offered by Mr. Perry. Without objection, the reading is dispensed with, and Mr. Perry is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This amendment deals with covert testing at airport. The amendment is critical to ensuring TSA identifies weaknesses in its screening technologies and processes and addresses those weaknesses before they are exploited. It requires the TSA administrator to conduct covert testing to identify vulnerabilities at airports on an ongoing basis for the next five years and identify corrective actions to mitigate those vulnerabilities. Further, it requires the DHS Inspector General to review TSA's covert test results, methodology, and data, compare that as 
that to its own covert testing in order to identify systemic vulnerabilities in TSA screening and monitor the extent to which TSA is taking corrective action. It lays out the elements that TSA should consider when conducting covert tests to ensure that the covert tests are rigorous and accurately identify vulnerabilities in TSA security measures. It also ensures that TSA uses threat items in covert tests that are based on available intelligence, selects airports based on risk, and identifies reasons for test failure, while ensuring congressional oversight of weakness in TSA security measures by requiring both TSA and the IG report their respective findings to congressional committees of jurisdiction. Since its creation, TSA has spent billions of dollars on screening equipment and training of its personnel in order to stop attempted ter terrorist attacks on the nation's aviation system. However, this summer, a leaked DHS Inspector General report showed that TSA screeners failed 67, 67 out of 70 covert tests. According to Secretary Jay Johnson, TSA covert tests have been a critical element of and in the continual evolution of aviation security since TSA's creation and are an important step in testing, measuring, and enhancing TSA's capabilities and techniques as threats evolve. With that, I urge support of the amendment and I yield back. The gentleman yields back. Is there any further discussion on the amendment? There being no further discussion, the question now occurs in the amendment offered by Mr. Perry. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed signify by saying no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it, and the amendment uh, is agreed to. Listed next on the roster is an amendment offered by the gentlewoman from Texas, Ms. Jackson Lee. Would the gentlewoman like to offer her amendment? Uh, yes. Um, I have an amendment at the desk. And you ask unanimous consent? Ask unanimous consent. That they be considered on block without objection. Uh, so order, the clerk shall report the amendment. On block amendment to H.R. 3584. Offer by Ms. Jackson Lee. Without objection, the reading of the amendment is dispensed with, and Ms. Jackson Lee is recognized for five minutes. I thank the chairman and ranking member. I think this amendment uh, amendments are cited as 948, 949 uh, to H.R. 3584. The first amendment within this envelope seeks to add an additional clause into the section of this bill pertaining to surface inspectors. This provision within the bill is extremely important because our surface transportation sector is particularly vulnerable. Recent incidents overseas, such as the attempted attack on a passenger train traveling from Amsterdam to Paris, um, makes it necessary that Homeland Security take steps to ensure that the nation's surface transportation is prepared for the worst case scenario. I, like many members of this committee, are grateful for the quick thinking and actions taken by Spencer Stone, Anthony Sadler, and uh, Alec Scalartos on that Paris bound train that stopped a lone wolf terrorist and saved the lives of many, many people traveling on the train. Again, we thank those American heroes. My amendment see, uh, simply seeks to have the Comptroller General also provide recommendations related to the efficiency and effectiveness of TSA's Surface Transportation Security Inspectors Program to make sure that it is working as it should. The most recent work done by the Government Accountability Office on the topic of surface transportation was 2012. At that time, U.S. transportation system moved a daily average of 54 million tons of freight. This amendment, the second amendment of the on block, is intended to address recent incidents involving covert testing within the nation's airports. This amendment would also support the need for training of transportation security administration security personnel to occur on a continuing basis. This amendment seeks to ensure that the TSA is providing periodic and recurring training to transportation security officers by requiring the administrator to brief the committees of jurisdiction on the agency's efforts in this regard. From the time I've served on this committee uh, dealing with transportation security, I've always talked about professional development and training, and I hope my colleagues will support both of the Jackson Lee amendments. I ask for support of this on block amendment from my colleagues in the committee. I yield back. General Lady uh, yields back. Is there any further discussion on the on block uh, amendment? There being no further discussion, the question now occurs on the on block amendment. Offered by Ms. Jackson Lee. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed signify by saying no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it, and the amendment um, is agreed to. Listed next on the roster is an amendment offered by the general, gentleman from Florida, Mr. Clausen. Would the gentleman like to offer his amendment? Mr. Chairman and ranking member, fellow committee members, thank you for the opportunity to present my proposed amendment to H.R. 3584. This is a simple amendment focused on the uh, If the gentleman will, will yield, uh, um, uh, the clerk shall report the amendment. Amendment to H.R. 3584, Sorry. offered by Mr. Clausen. Sorry about that. W without objection, the reading of the amendment is dispensed with, and Mr. Clausen is now recognized for five minutes. 
This amendment urges that the TSA efficiency report shall include one specific option for redirecting the, the savings that previously mentioned. The reimbursement to airports for installing explosive detection system equipment in line with their baggage handling systems after 9-11. While Congress is not empowered to direct Man. TSA as to how to spend funds, we really see this as a fairness issue. But we do ask all committee members to consider this. After 9-11, airports nationwide redirected money from the other projects for inline screening in accordance with federal law and with the understanding that most of these expenditures would be reimbursed by the federal government. Congress has repeatedly reaffirmed this, especially in making EDS e equipment for inspecting bags law in 2001, immediately after the attacks, and in 2007, public law that implemented recommendations on the 9-11 Commission. Yet to this day, airports around the country have not been reimbursed. This is simply not fair. It's not right. And a yes vote today could help set this straight. I ask you to vote to include this amendment into H.R. 3584. We often talk about fairness around this table and in our Congress. I say let's be fair to the, the folks that run our airports and the taxpayers and so that they, these people can get reimbursed. I thank you for this time today and now I'm prepared to answer any questions on the matter. The gentleman yields back. Is there any further discussion uh, on the amendment? I uh, appreciate the gentleman offering this amendment. That's a good amendment. The chair uh, supports it. Uh, there being no further discussion, the question now occurs on the amendment offered by Mr. Clausen. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed signify by saying no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it and the amendment uh, is agreed to. Listed next on the roster is an amendment offered by the gentleman from Rhode Island, Mr. Longevin. Would the gentleman like to offer his amendment? Yeah, yes, Mr. Chairman, I have an amendment at the desk and I ask for its consideration. Clerk shall report the amendment. Amendment to H.R. 3584, off Mr. Langevin. Without objection, the reading is dispensed with, and Mr. Langevin is uh, recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this amendment is the result of uh, a joint subcommittee hearing Mr. Katko and Mr. King uh, held two weeks ago. While I was generally impressed by the witnesses' knowledge of sur surface transportation security issues, they did not exhibit a particular understanding of the cybersecurity threat to, uh, to critical transportation infrastructure. I found this disconcerting, and uh, as TSA is the sector-specific agency, along with Coast Guard, in charge of coordinating cybersecurity of the transportation sector. So my amendment adds a review uh, of surface transportation sectors, uh, transportation inspectors' roles uh, and um, responsibilities with respect to information system security, protecting our nation's a critical infrastructure from cyber attack requires strong public-private partnerships and it's incumbent upon us to ensure the government is living up to its responsibilities in the relationship. So I encourage the uh, support of my common sense amendment and I yield back. Uh, gentleman uh, yields back. Is there any further discussion on the amendment? There being no further discussion, the question now occurs on the amendment offered by Mr. Longevin. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed signify by saying no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it, and the amendment uh, is agreed to. Are there any further amendments to the bill? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have an off-roster amendment, and it's at the desk. Ranking members recognize. The clerk shall report and distribute the amendment. Amendment to H.R. 3584, offered by Mr. Thompson. Without objection, the reading of the amendments dispensed with. The gentleman is recognized for five minutes. Uh, Thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman. This is basically a uh, correction uh, in terms of uh, uh, wording. Uh, this amendment is a change that is minor in nature and worked out uh, with bipartisan cooperation. It simply changes the word reduce to assess in terms of the establishment of a screening system for passengers as to not presuppose that less screening personnel will be needed. And with that, I yield back. Gentleman yields back. Is there any further discussion on the amendment? There being no further discussion, the question now occurs on the amendment offered by Mr. Thompson. All those in, in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed signify by saying no. 
In the opinion of the chair, uh, the ayes have it and the amendment uh, is agreed to. Are there any further amendments uh, to the bill? There being no further amendments uh, to the bill, the question now occurs on agreeing to H.R. 3584 as amended. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed signify by saying no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it and the bill is agreed to. The question now occurs on reporting the bill, H.R. 3584, as amended to the House with a favorable recommendation. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed signify by saying no. In the opinion of the chair, uh, the ayes have it and the motion is agreed to. Without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table. Staff is authorized to make any technical and conforming changes. I now call up H.R. 3102, the Airport Access Control Security Improvement Act of 2015. The bill is circulated in, in advance and printed copies are available. The clerk shall designate the bill. H.R. 3102. Without objection, the reading is dispensed with and the bill is considered read and open to amendment at any point. And listed first on the roster and is, roster is an amendment in the nature of a substitute offered by Mr. Katko. Does the gentleman from New York wish to offer his amendment? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I have an amendment in the nature of a substitute listed on the roster, and I ask for its consideration at this time. Clerk shall report the amendment in the nature of a substitute. Amendment in the nature of a substitute to H.R. 3102, offered by Mr. Katko. Without objection, the reading is dispensed with, and the amendment in the nature of a substitute shall be considered base text for purposes of amendment. Uh, the amendment in the nature of a substitute it was noticed to committee members in compliance with the rules. The chair now recognizes the gentleman from New York for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. H.R. 3102 is a critically important bipartisan piece of legislation which serves as a culmination of months of intense oversight on the issue of airport access controls and the insider threat to aviation security. The gaps in access control made headlines after an investigation revealed that aviation employees were trafficking weapons and ammunitions between Atlanta and New York. Furthermore, a recent Inspector General report found that TSA failed to identify 73 aviation workers with potential links to terrorism. It is the responsibility of this committee to act to prevent similar stories from emerging. One such story emerged recently where individuals were engaged in uh, drug trafficking by using the employee access points to bring the drugs into airports. At a preliminary hearing after one of the, the arrests, one of the uh, agents testified that in addition to offering access to the airport for drug trafficking, they also offered to transport bombs through the uh, employee access controls, which is truly frightening. The amendment in nature of a substitute I am offering reflects the changes made at the subcommittee markup and have another amendment at the desk that addresses further concerns raised by unions that I've spoken with and collaborated with. I will continue to work with labor representatives to ensure that the workers' rights are protected while ensuring that the security of our aviation system is the overarching priority of all involved parties. I want to thank Ranking Member Rice for her hard work and attention to this issue, and we have focused heavily on these problems in a bipartisan manner. Together, we can fix these problems and assure the American public that their aviation system is secure and adaptive to changing threats. Gentleman yields back. Is there any further discussion on the amendment in the nature of a substitute? There being no further discussion on the amendment in the nature of a substitute, the committee will move to consideration of the amendments on the roster. First amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute is uh, listed on the roster is a substitute amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute offered by Mr. Thompson. Does the gentleman wish to offer his amendment? Uh, yes. The clerk shall report the amendment. Substitute for the amendment in the nature of a substitute to H.R. 3102. Offered by Mr. Thompson. Without objection, the reading is dispensed with. Mr. Thompson is recognized for five minutes. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. As you know, coming in today, I had some concerns that the well-intentioned H.R. 3102 could set into motion some potentially serious unintended consequences. In fact, I had prepared a substitute measure that I was planning to offer today. However, uh, I no longer see the need to offer uh, my substitute uh, as the bill's sponsor, Mr. Katko, has listened to my concerns and agreed to make some key changes that I was seeking in the disqualifying offenses section of the bill. I'm also pleased that the underlying bill explain, expands the availability of the appeals and waiver process under the Transportation Worker Identification Credential Program to the CIDA badge program. 
while I continue to have some reservations about a few other features of the bill, including mandates on TSA regarding employee screening and the auditing of all airport issue identification media. Today, I will be supporting H.R. 3102 as amended by the CATCO amended, amendment. Again, I'd like to thank Mr. CATCO for his responsiveness to the concerns raised by me, as well as representatives from the labor community. Uh, and I look forward to continuing to work with him in 3102. Uh, I ask for my amendment uh, to be withdrawn at this time. And again, uh, say to Mr. Katko, I, I appreciate your uh, interest in uh, hearing some of the concerns that have been raised to me and, and including them in this, in this bill. Gentleman uh, withdraws his amendment. Is there any further discussion on the amendment? Mr. Uh, briefly, briefly I th I'll continue to love fest by thanking Mr. Thompson as well, because Mr. Thompson's been very flexible with this, and we, um, it's the way Congress is supposed to work. We have issues, we work the bills out, and we get, the, we, we get to the finish line because we talk about them in advance and work them out. And I appreciate your flexibility, I appreciate uh, your support, and I appreciate the fact that we can collaborate and, and get things done. That's what it's all about. So thank you very much. And if I could associate myself with, with those remarks, this was the one um, bill that was had some contention uh, in it, and I appreciate both Mr. Katko and the ranking member sitting down, having open dialogue to work out differences. Um, that's the way Congress is supposed to work, uh, and it's unfortunate in this day and time. It, it unfortunately doesn't work as often as we would like it to. And um, But this committee will continue to carry that spirit. Are there any further amendments to the amendment in the nature of a substitute? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I have an amendment at the desk. Uh, the clerk shall report the amendment. Amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute to H.R. 3102, offered by Mr. Katko. Without objection, the reading of the amendments dispensed with. Mr. Katko is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This amendment is a result of discussions and feedback with the labor community and our colleagues on the other side of the aisle. I thank the ranking member for his cooperation and support of this legislation, and I look forward to working with him on these issues going forward. I yield back. Gentleman yields back. Is there any further discussion on the amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute? Uh, there being no further discussion, the question now occurs on the amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute offered by Mr. Katko. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. And all those opposed, signify by saying no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it and the amendment is agreed to. Are there any further amendments to the amendment in the nature of a substitute? There being no further amendments, the question now occurs in agreeing to the amendment in the nature of a substitute uh, to H.R. 3102 as amended. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed signify by saying no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it, and the amendment in the nature of a substitute as amended is agreed to. The question now occurs on reporting H.R. 3102 as amended to the House with a favorable recommendation. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed signify by saying no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it and the motion is agreed to. Without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table and staff is authorized to make any technical uh, and conforming changes. <laughs> I now call up H.R. 3578, the DHS Science and Technology Reform and Improvement Act of 2015. The bill is circulated in advance and printed copies are available. Clerk shall designate the bill. H.R. 3578. Without objection, the reading is dispensed with. The bill is considered read and open to the amendment process at any point. Listed first on the amendment roster is an amendment in the nature of a substitute offered by the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Ratcliffe. Does the gentleman wish to offer his amendment? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I have an amendment in the nature of a substitute listed on the roster and ask for its consideration at this time. Clerk shall report the amendment. Amendment in the nature of a substitute to H.R. 3578, offered by Mr. Ratcliffe. Without objection, the reading is dispensed with the, the amendment in the nature of a substitute shall be considered base text for purposes of amendment. The amendment in the nature of a substitute was noticed to committee members in compliance with committee rules. Chair now recognizes the gentleman from Texas for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
The DHS Science and Technology Directorate, or S&T, monitors the nation's evolving threats and utilizes technological advancements to develop and deliver solutions for the critical needs of DHS components. H.R. 3758, the DHS Science and Technology Reform and Improvement Act of 2015, makes targeted adjustments and strategic improvements on how DHS S&T carries out its responsibility to conduct research and development in an effort to strengthen the directorate and address some of its well-documented challenges. This proposed legislation defines a clear mission statement for DHS S&T and codifies the directorate's portfolio review process that engages key leadership and stakeholders to ensure research and development meets directorate and departmental goals. During subcommittee consideration, several amendments were considered and accepted, including from the gentleman uh, from Louisiana, Mr. Richmond's amendment to codify integrated product teams, a mechanism that will support the directorate's ability to identify, coordinate, and align research and development efforts with departmental missions. Today, the amendment in the nature of a substitute that we consider includes language to ensure that the directorate identifies technical capability requirements and creates solutions with researchers and the private sector, as well as bolster S&T's role as a coordinator of research and development across the department. It requires additional transparency in the directorate's annual budget submission by requiring S&T to link its budget with research areas and programs. The amendment in the nature of a substitute also strengthens S&T's cybersecurity research and development by ensuring technologies for information sharing, analytics, and methodology are considered, and that sector-specific agencies for critical infrastructure are included in the coordination of cybersecurity research and development. Lastly, it codifies the transition to practice program to support the life cycle of cyber projects, including research, development, testing, evaluation, and transition. Cybersecurity research and development is essential to support DHS's efforts to secure the .gov domain. The seriousness of this mission received heightened awareness after the OPM breach compromised the highly sensitive information, personal information, of more than 20 million Americans. Just last week, S&T awarded an effort to create technology to defend against distributed denial of service or DDoS attacks that are often sophisticated and render key resources unavailable. S&T is working to promote industry developed best practices that will make the internet more secure for users. S&T is the primary research arm of the, of the department, managing the basic and applied research and development of science and technology for DHS's operational components. This legislation would strengthen this role and work to support the security of our nation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for bringing this bill up today <clears throat> for our consideration. I urge my colleagues' support, and I yield back. Uh, gentleman yields. Is there any further discussion on the amendment in the nature of a substitute? Uh, let me just say I, I support this amendment. I appreciate the gentleman bringing this forward uh, before this committee, uh, and uh, it will obviously go to the House floor. There being no um, further discussion of the amendment in the nature of a substitute, the committee will move to consideration of the amendments to the amendment in the nature of a substitute uh, listed uh, on the roster. Per the roster agreement listed next is an amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute offered by the gentleman from Mississippi, Mr. Thompson. Would the gentleman like to offer his amendment? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. I have two amendments to the amendment in the nature of a substitute listed on the roster and act unanimous consent that they be considered considered en bloc. Without objection, so order the clerk shall report the en bloc amendment on to block, the amendment in nature of substitute. En bloc amendment to the amendment in the nature of substitute to H.R. 3578, offered by Mr. Thompson. Uh, without objection, the readings dispensed with. Mr. Thompson is recognized for five minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Chairman. My first amendment would add H.R. Uh, 2390, the Homeland Security University Based Centers Review Act legislation. Uh, authored and passed the House. Specifically, the amendment would require the directorate to examine and analyze the university program's activities and the collaborative agreements that are used with universities and other institutions and assess the department effort in broadcasting its diversity. My second amendment 
codifies the department's ongoing efforts to partner with Incatel and others to provide venture capital to small businesses and others who have innovative homeland security technologies that are close to being ready for commercialization. Carefully targeted venture capital investments can accelerate product development and add mission critical capabilities. By focusing on commercial technologies and investing side by side with venture firms, high tech venture capital organizations help develop sustainable, sustainable solutions using off the shelf products instead of custom built systems. My amendment does not prescribe any particular approach, but merely codifies s and support for such efforts, which dates back to 2011. Since that time, s and partnerships with Incotel in particular has helped to bring to market technologies to protect networks, industrial control systems, and other critical infrastructure. s and reports that for every dollar it invests in venture capital, $2.00 66 cent is leveraged from other federal partners, and as a result, S&T has been able to partner with the private sector for an even greater impact and return on investment. <clears throat> I encourage my colleagues to support both my en bloc amendments and yield back. Uh, gentleman yields back. Is there any further discussion on the en bloc uh, amendment? There being no further discussion, the question now occurs on the en bloc amendment to the amendment in the nature of substitute offered by Mr. Thompson, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed signify by saying no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it, and the en bloc amendment to the amendment in the nature of substitute is agreed to. Per the roster agreement listed next is an amendment to the amendment in the nature of substitute offered by the gentleman from Rhode Island, Mr. Longevin. Would the gentleman like to offer his amendment? Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have uh, two amendments at the desk, and I ask for the consideration en bloc. Without objection, so order the clerk shall report the en bloc amendment. En bloc amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute to H.R. 3578, offer Mr. Langevin. Without objection, the reading of the amendment is dispensed with. Mr. Langevin is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, before I uh, get into my amendments, I'd like to take this opportunity uh, to just uh, thank the chairman of the CIPST subcommittee, uh, Mr. Radcliffe, uh, ranking member uh, Mr. Richmond, for their work uh, on this bill and uh, look forward to supporting it uh, once it comes up for its full consideration. Uh, my First Amendment, Mr. Chairman, authorizes the Homeland Security STEM Summer Internship Program, currently uh, run by the Office of University Programs uh, as a workforce uh, development initiative. Building a STEM-educated uh, workforce is absolutely essential to our continued success as a nation. The growth industries of the 21st century will require students uh, with a firm understanding of science and mathematics. This is doubly true in nascent fields like cybersecurity, where the so shortage of qualified professionals is inhibiting economic growth and impairing our national security. The HS STEM program, which provides students with a stipend for 10 weeks of Homeland Security related research, provides three uh, distinct avenues to achieve this end. First, HS STEM provides needed encouragement for students to pursue STEM degrees. Undergraduate and early gradu graduate grant opportunities provide critical, tangible support that reinforces interest in science just as students are making important decisions about their futures. Second, HS STEM summer interns, internships provide students with research, research mentors who provide valuable career advice and help steer students to homeland security, employment, and s and priority research areas. Finally, the summer interns conduct real, valuable research at university centers of excellence at the cutting edge uh, of their fields, contributing to our understanding of challenges and solutions in protecting homeland security. My second amendment adds the review uh, of source code underpinning critical infrastructure systems to s and cybersecurity research activities. The importance of this amendment uh, is best illustrated by an example uh, from our, our recent history. In April 2014, Google security researchers discovered uh, the colorfully named Heartbleed vulnerability in the OpenSSL library. OpenSSL provides for secure communication between devices across a network. Essentially, it is one of the protocols that underlies the padlock you see in the upper left corner 
of your browser when visiting a, a secure site. At the, the time of, of Heartbleed's discovery, 17% of, web, uh, of secure web servers in the world, more than half a million, were using a vulnerable version of OpenSSL and were thus open to attack. OpenSSL is open source software. The, the code is freely available to be reviewed, updated, and used. And used it has been. Almost every piece of software or service you use today relies on some open source library for part of its functionality. Unfortunately, while open source software is available for review, there are sometimes shockingly few people who actually uh, take the opportunity to analyze the code. OpenSSL, a technology that supported uh, billions of dollars in economic activity, was maintained by one full-time and three part-time volunteers who operated on a donated budget of $2,000 per year. Providing support for security audits of public projects like OpenSSL is embraced by business, academia, and government, all of which make use of common libraries, and it should be supported by the S&T uh, Directorate Cybersecurity R&D efforts. So with that, Mr. Chairman, uh, I'd like to again uh, thank uh, the subcommittee chairman and the ranking member, uh, as well as their staffs on uh, their work on this, uh, on this bill and these amendments, and I urge adoption uh, of these amendments, and I, I yield back. Gentleman yields back. Is there any further discussion on the on block amendment? There will be no further discussion. The question now occurs in the on block amendment to the amendment in the nature of substitute offered by Mr. Longevin. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed signify by saying no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it, and the on block amendment is agreed to. Thank you, Chair. Listed next on the roster is an amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute offered by the gentleman from New York, Mr. Higgins. Uh, would the gentleman like to offer his amendment? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I have an amendment at the desk. Clerk shall report. Amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute to H.R. 3578, offered by Mr. Higgins. Without objection, the reading of the amendments dispensed with, Mr. Higgins is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My amendment will encourage the department to emphasize research and development efforts in the areas of remote sensing and, and imaging. Over the years, as we have seen, uh, GAO reports, uh, especially on border and maritime R&D investments, they reveal a severe uh, challenge faced by DHS uh, when confronting uh, the tracking of small vessels in ports, uh, including the challenges associated with detecting and reporting intrusions and the trafficking of cargo containers as they pass through the global supply chain. Uh, with the rapid development of drone image and sensing technology and increased emphasis on remote sensors in mass transit, I feel that remote sensing and imaging R&D will be one of the next critical areas of investigation uh, in uh, technology development. My amendment encourages the department to include remote sensing and imaging as an area of R&D interest in its priorities. I yield back. Gentleman yields back. Is there any further discussion? There being no further discussion, the question now occurs in the amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute offered by Mr. Higgins. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed signify by saying no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. The amendment is agreed to. Listed next on the roster is an amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute offered by the gentleman from Louisiana, Mr. Richmond. Would the gentleman like to offer his amendment? Yes, <coughs> yes, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to offer my amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute. Clerk shall report the amendment. Amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute to H.R. 3578, offered by Mr. Richmond. Without objection, uh, the reading is dispensed with. Mr. Richmond's recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and my amendment is short. It modifies the S&T Fellows Program in the underlying bill by encouraging DHS to attract fellows with interest in and expertise in critical infrastructure issues. Uh, issues and areas. DHS has many partners in its efforts to protect and defend the nation's critical infrastructure. The department could benefit greatly from attracting talented graduate and postgraduate students that have scientific or engineering expertise okay. in critical infrastructure, infrastructure systems like banking and financial services, the energy sector, uh, including the electric grid, and the transportation sector like our nation's air and seaports. My amendment simply supports DHS's S&T Fellows Program and its efforts to attract fellows with such expertise. With that, Mr. Chairman, I would yield back. 
gentleman yields uh, back. Is there any further uh, discussion uh, on the amendment? There being no further discussion, uh, the question now occurs in the amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute offered by Mr. Richmond. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed signify by saying no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it, and the amendment uh, is agreed to. Uh, listed next on the roster is an amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute offered by the gentleman from New York, uh, Mr. Donovan. Would the gentleman like to offer his amendment? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I have an amendment at the desk. Clerk shall report the amendment. Amendment to the amendment in the nature of substitute to H.R. 3578, offered by Mr. Donovan. Without objection, reading is dispensed with, and Mr. Donovan is recognized for five minutes. Mr. Chairman, this is actually an amendment by Mr. Marino from Pennsylvania, who is unable to attend, so I present so this uh, in his stead. Uh, this amendment makes a simple addition to ensure industry and academia are included in the science and technology Directorate's coordination efforts for cybersecurity research and development. Cybersecurity has quickly become a part of our everyday world, enabling industry and academia collaboration on the Directorate's basic cyber research and development will strengthen the nation's cybersecurity. The amendment in the nature of a substitute already includes a requirement for the Directorate to coordinate with a number of federal organizations. This amendment ensures stakeholders from industry and academia are also at the table. This coordination should feed DHS's work and should benefit both industry and academia. Building these relationships between government, academia, and the private sector is essential to combating cyber threats. I ask my colleagues to support this, member, this amendment, and I yield back. The gentleman yields back. Is there any further discussion on the amendment? There being no further discussion, the question now occurs on the amendment. To the amendment, the nature of a substitute offered by Mr. Donovan. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, signify by saying no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. The amendment is agreed to. There are no additional amendments listed on the roster. Are there any further amendments to the amendment in the nature of a substitute? There being no further amendments, the question now occurs on agreeing to the amendment in the nature of a substitute to H.R. 3578 as amended. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed signify by saying no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it, and the amendment in the nature of a substitute as amended is agreed to. Question now occurs on reporting H.R. 3578 as amended to the House with a favorable recommendation. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed signify by saying no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. The motion is agreed to. Without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table. Staff is authorized to make any technical and conforming uh, changes. I now call up uh, H.R. 3144, the Partners for Aviation Security Act. The bill was circulated in advance and printed copies are available. Clerk shall designate the bill. H.R. 3144. Without objection, the reading is dispensed with and the bill is considered read and open to amendment at any point. Is there any Mr. Chair? discussion on the bill? The gentleman, Mr. Payne, is recognized. I have an amendment at the desk. Uh, the clerk shall report. Amendment to H.R. 3144, offered by Mr. Payne. Uh, without objection, the uh, reading is uh, dispensed with, and uh, the chair recognizes the gentleman for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. What's going on here? Uh, the purpose of H.R. 3144 is to require TSA to consult with the ASAC when making modifications to prohibited items, the prohibited items list. In addition, this bill serves to encourage further engagement of the Transportation Security Oversight Board to ensure that they are meeting frequently and handling matters related to transportation security. My amendment clarifies the technical point in the bill and seeks to have the Secretary of Homeland provide a status report to Congress on Transportation Security Oversight Board meetings and activities. I urge my colleagues to support the amendment and I yield back the balance of my time. Gentleman yields back. Is there any further discussion uh, on the amendment? There being no further discussion, the question now occurs on the amendment offered by Mr. Payne. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed signify by saying no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. The amendment uh, is agreed to. There are no additional amendments listed on the roster. Are there any further amendments to the bill? There being no further amendments, a question now occurs on agreeing to the bill, H.R. 3144, 
As amended, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed signify by saying no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it and the bill is agreed to. The question now occurs on reporting the bill HR 3144 as amended to the House with a favorable recommendation. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed signify by saying no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it and the motion uh, is agreed to. And without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table and staff is authorized to make any technical uh, and conforming changes. I now call up HR 3510, the Department of Homeland Security Cybersecurity Strategy Act of 2015. The bill was circulated in advance and printed copies are available. Clerk shall designate the bill. HR 3510. Without objection, the reading is dispensed with and uh, is considered open and read, uh, read and open to amendment at any point. The gentleman from Louisiana, Mr. Richmond, is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and let me start by thanking our subcommittee chairman, Mr. Ratcliffe, uh, for working uh, with me on this bill and co-sponsoring it uh, and ensuring timely consideration of the Department of Homeland Security Cybersecurity Strategy Act of 2015. In crafting this bipartisan legislation, I think we've arrived at many areas of agreement that will support the department in meeting some of their most persistent cybersecurity challenges. Two weeks ago, the DHS Office of Inspector General issued a report entitled, DHS Can Strengthen Its Cyber Mission Coordination Efforts. Ultimately, the report recommended that DHS develop a strategic plan to improve cyber activities in all of its agencies. Simply put, H.R. 3510 directs the Secretary of Homeland Security to develop a department-wide strategy and implementation plan for carrying out all of its cybersecurity missions. Fundamentally, my bill seeks to assist the department in the development of a clear and measurable strategic cyber posture that can be a model for other government agencies. With that, Mr. Chairman, I just ask uh, for my colleague's support and yield back. Gentleman yields back. Is there any further discussion uh, on the bill? There being no further discussion of the bill, the committee will move to consideration of the amendments on the roster. Per the agreement uh, listed first is, is an amendment offered by the gentleman from Florida, uh, Mr. Clausen. Would the gentleman like to offer his amendment? The clerk shall report. Amendment to H.R. 3510, offered by Mr. Clausen. Without objection, the reading is dispensed with, and Mr. Clausen is recognized for five minutes. Yep. First, first of all, Cedric, this is a good bill. Thanks. Uh, ranking member, my fellow committee members, thank you for this opportunity to present my proposed amendment to H.R. 3510. This is a simple amendment, one offered to protect the Fourth Amendment. Privacy rights for our citizens. The amendment requires that the DHS must submit a plan to Congress regarding cybersecurity. It directs that nothing in DHS's cybersecurity plan be interpreted as allowing the department to engage in surveillance for the purpose of tracking an individual's personal identifiable information. Earlier this year, a federal court ruled that the NSA's bulk call data collection program was unconstitutional. This amendment is in the spirit of that ruling. I think we must be vigilant in protecting our citizens' personal identifiable information, especially in today's digital age. That said, we must stri always strike the right balance between civil liberties and keeping the country safe. I ask you all to vote yes on this amendment. Let's protect Fourth Amendment rights of our citizens. I thank you all for your time today. I yield back. Gentleman yields back. Is there any further uh, discussion on, on the amendment? Um, I'd like to associate myself with uh, Mr. Clausen's uh, comments. And I think uh, this committee, I think in the cyber legislation we passed, stress the importance of privacy and civil liberties um, in the process, and, and um, uh, I strongly support uh, this amendment. Uh, th there being no further discussion, the question now occurs on the amendment offered by Mr. Clausen. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed signify by saying no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it, and the amendment uh, is agreed to. There are no additional amendments listed on the roster. Are there any further amendments to the bill? There being no further amendments, the question now occurs on agreeing to the bill, H.R. 3510 as amended. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed signify by saying no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it and the bill is agreed to. 
The question now occurs on reporting the bill, H.R. 3510, as amended to the House with a favorable recommendation. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed signify by saying no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. The motion is agreed to. Without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table and staff is authorized to make any technical and conforming changes. I now call up H.R. 3490, the Strengthening State and Local Cyber Crime Fighting Act. The bill was circulated in advance. The clerk shall designate the bill. H.R. 3490. Uh, without objection, the reading is dispensed with. Uh, bill is considered read and open to amendment at any point. Listed first on the roster is an amendment in the nature of a substitute offered by the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Ratcliffe. Does the gentleman wish to offer his amendment? Yes, Mr. Chairman. I have an amendment in the nature of a substitute listed on the roster and I ask for its consideration at this time. The clerk shall report the amendment. Amendment in the nature of a substitute to H.R. 3490, offered by Mr. Ratcliffe. Without objection, the readings dispensed with, and the amendment shall be considered base text for purposes of the amendment. The amendment in the nature of a substitute was noticed to committee uh, members in compliance with the rules. The chair now recognizes the gentleman from Texas. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's very clear to all of us on this committee that today's cyber criminals present a new challenge to our law enforcement, to our prosecutors, and to our judges. It no longer takes a sophisticated cyber criminal to compromise personal and sensitive information from U.S. companies or everyday Americans. To the contrary, criminals can very easily obtain cyber exploit tools to create this havoc on the dark web. And with the increasing number of cyber attacks, it's vital that our state and local law enforcement, prosecutors, and judges be properly trained to protect the American people. For those reasons, I'm grateful for the opportunity today to introduce the Strengthening State and Local Cybercrime Fighting Act of 2015 to bolster state and local law enforcement efforts to fight cybercrime. This bill will authorize the National Computer Forensics Institute, or NCFI. The institute was created in 2007 by the state of Alabama and is now operated by the United States Secret Service. Located in Hoover, Alabama, the NCFI is comprised of a 32,000 square foot facility consisting of classrooms, mock courtrooms, and an operational forensics laboratory. The NCFI has already garnered a reputation as the premier cyber training center in the nation, one that supports state and local law enforcement investigators, prosecutors, and judicial officials. To date, NCFI has trained and equipped more than 4,500 local officials from all 50 states, and from three U.S. territories. These NCFI graduates represent more than 1,500 agencies nationwide, including agencies from my congressional district, the 4th District of Texas, and law enforcement personnel from Collin County, Hunt County, and the Greenville Police Department. Mr. Chairman, this bill gives men and women across this country the necessary tools and training that are needed to fight cyber criminals in the 21st century. So I thank you, Mr. Chairman, for bringing up this important legislation before us today. And with that, I yield back. The gentleman yields back. Is there any further discussion on the amendment in the nature of a substitute? Uh, there being no further discussion on the amendment, we'll move to consideration of the amendments to the amendment in the nature of a substitute listed on the roster. Per the roster agreement listed next is an amendment in the nature of substitute uh, to the amendment in the nature of substitute offered by the gentleman from Texas. Ms. Jackson Lee, would the gentlelady like to offer her amendment? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I have two amendments at the desk and ask unanimous consent that they be considered on block. Without objection, so order, the clerk shall report the on block amendment. On block amendment to H.R. 3490, offered by Ms. Jackson Lee. Without objection, the reading is dispensed with. Ms. Jackson Lee is recognized for five minutes. I think the gentleman uh, from Texas and myself uh, were together earlier today uh, talking about uh, the same. Um, uh, effort and uh, certainly I am grateful uh, for this and uh, it gives me a second opportunity in the record uh, to acknowledge the gentleman from Texas and the gentleman from Louisiana for their great work. Uh, this is a crucial uh, step or an important step in helping our local and state uh, governments but it also gives me an opportunity to thank the Secret Service uh, for uh, the excellent job that they did uh, in protecting uh, Pope Francis uh, both in Washington, New York, uh, and of course Philadelphia, uh, and I think where applause is due, we should give it because this committee has oversight over Secret Service, Director Clancy, and for the safe departure of Pope Francis back to his home, the Vatican. We are delighted 
uh, for the impact that he had and the protection that he was given. So my amendments are, um, are two amendments, <coughs> and uh, my first amendment simply makes this vital cybercrime investigative resource of the federal government available to provide best practices to local, state, territorial, and tribal law enforcement. The Secret Service also runs the National Computer Forensic Institute, which provides law enforcement officers, prosecutors, and judges with cyber training and information to combat cyber crime. And I think to expand it, uh, to provide it for every aspect of our nation is very important. The Second Amendment uh, provides assurances that nothing in this act shall be construed to abridge or impair the rights of persons in the United States protection or their protection by the Fourth and Fifth Amendments to the United States Constitution. As the work uh, of law enforcement national security must rely more and more on their ability mm -hmm. to access information in cyberspace or what might be stored as on personal devices, it's important that the public knows and understands that their constitutional rights will and must be protected. I ask my colleagues to support the Jackson Lee amendments that have been given on block, and they are uh, 241 and 242. With that, I yield back. The gentleman uh, yields back. Is there any further discussion on the on block uh, amendment? Let me just associate myself with the gentleman's remarks regarding the uh, Pope's visit, and I want to personally, uh, on the record, state my deep appreciation for the efforts of the uh, uh, United States Secret Service, uh, tremendous effort uh, work that they conducted. Um, obviously, the Pope is a uh, a high value target, unfortunately. And uh, I also want to commend the FBI uh, and Homeland Security officials for their great work uh, in preventing any potential attacks. I uh, join you on that, uh, Mr. Chairman, and uh, look forward to uh, the continued efforts that will be successful in going forward. I appreciate you bringing that up uh, during this markup. Uh, is there any further uh, discussion on the um, Amendment. Uh, there being no further discussion, the question now occurs on the on block amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute offered by Ms. Jackson Lee. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed signify by saying no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it, and the on block amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute is agreed to. And Mr. Chick, um, uh, the ch uh, chair, uh, yeah, I just wanna, yeah, I. I thought I'd incorrectly given the numbers, but it is correct. These arm blocks were listed, at least in my records, 241 and 242. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I yield back. Julie Yields, are there any, um, there are no additional amendments listed on the roster. Are there any further amendments to the amendment in the nature of a substitute? There being no further amendments, the question now occurs in agreeing to the amendment in the nature of a substitute to H.R. 3490 as amended. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, signify by saying no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it, and the amendment in the nature of a substitute as amended is agreed to. The question now occurs on reporting H.R. 3490 as amended to the House with a favorable recommendation. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed signify by saying no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it, and the motion is agreed to. Without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table. Staff is authorized to make any technical and conforming uh, changes. I now call up H.R. 3493, the Securing the Cities Act of 2015. The bill is circulated in advance. The clerk shall designate the bill. H.R. 3493. Without objection, the reading is dispensed with. Uh, the gentleman from New York, Mr. Donovan, is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to thank you for holding this markup and for including my legislation, H.R. 3493 the Securing the Cities Act of 2015. Recently, this committee held a hearing at Ground Zero in New York City, right in the foundation of what was once the North Tower of the World Trade Center complex. The message from Com Commissioner Bill Bratton of the New York City Police Department at that hearing was clear. New York City faces a higher and more complex threat environment than ever before. The President himself stated that his top national security concerns remain, quote, the prospect of a nuclear weapon going off in Manhattan, end quote. To guard against this risk, the Department of Homeland Security initiated the Securing the Cities pilot program in 2006. This program is designated to prepare first responders to detect nuclear materials and prevent attacks. The initiative deploys radiation detection capabilities to the region's law enforcement agencies to identify illicit radiological materials that could be used for an attack. In fact, since 2007, 
the New York City region has purchased nearly 14,000 radiation detectors and trained nearly 20,000 personnel. In total, more than 21 million in radiation detection equipment has been installed throughout the metropolitan region and at critical points of entry into New York City. Building on this success in New York, the program was then expanded to include Los Angeles, California and the DC metropolitan area, and DHS recently announced designation of Houston, Texas as a city for inclusion in the program. This bill ensures that, pro that this program is fully authorized so that, so that New York City and the other designated jurisdictions can receive reliable funding for training and equipping first responders. Additionally, the bill restricts the program to high-risk urban areas and requires a report to Congress prior to the expansion of securing the cities to new locations. Finally, I would like to thank Representative Peter King for his steadfast support of this program over the years. Without his leadership, the city could not have built this robust capability. I would also like to thank you, Chairman McCall, uh, Subcommittee Chair Mr. Radcliffe and Ms. Jackson Lee for their co-sponsorship of this legislation and urge its adoption by the committee. I yield back the balance of my time. Gentleman yields back. Is there any further discussion of the bill? Uh, Chair uh, strongly supports this bill, and I want to thank uh, Mr. Donovan for bringing it uh, forward. Uh, there being no further discussion, the committee will move to consideration of the amendments on the roster per the roster agreement. The only amendment on the roster is an amendment offered by the gentlelady from Texas, Ms. Jackson Lee. Would the gentlelady like to offer her amendment? Um, yes, Mr. Chairman. I have an amendment at the desk listed on the roster and ask for consideration at this time. Clerk shall report the amendment. Amendment to H.R. 3493, offered by Ms. Jackson Lee. Without objection, the reading is dispensed with. The gentlelady uh, from Texas is recognized for five minutes. Mr. Chairman, thank you so very much. First of all, I want to thank Mr. Donovan for um, his leadership, and it was a pleasure to join with you. Uh, just a quick anecdote, uh, some of us who were here in 9-11, including Mr. Thompson and others, uh, remember that day and uh, remember the confusion as to where these terrorists might go. And I specifically uh, remember Mayor Lee P. Brown was our mayor at that time, former commissioner of uh, police, and uh, rumor was flying and saying because of the um, uh, energy capital of the world was Houston and refineries were there that they may be going there. I only say that to say that the addition of this uh, dealing with uh, adding uh, the aspect of uh, radioactive, radio radiologic uh, uh, nuclear detection and providing equipment and assistance and adding that uh, to the secure communities is vital. We never know what terrorist uh, tool will be used and what terrorists will cite as a um, place of um, of destruction. And so my amendment provides a report to the Oversight Committee on the feasibility of the agency developing model exercises to test preparedness, which should include live drills to better understand the preparedness of high-risk urban areas in meeting the challenges that may be posed by a range of nuclear or radiological threats. And so I ask my colleagues to support this amendment, congratulate Mr. Donovan, and indicate uh, that uh, there are many things that we face, natural disasters and otherwise, uh, but um, the unexpectedness of the terrorist uh, creativity attacking the American people, we must be prepared for, and I ask my colleagues to support the Jackson Lee Amendment. Thank you. Gen yield back. General Lee yields back. Is there any further discussion on the amendment? There being no further discussion, the question now occurs on the amendment offered by Ms. Jackson Lee. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed signify by saying no. The opinion of the chair of the ayes have it, and the amendment uh, is agreed to. There are no additional amendments listed on the roster. Are there any further amendments to the bill? Where's that yes coming from? Okay. There being <laughs> uh, somewhere from behind the curtain. <laughs> there being no further amendments, the question now occurs on agreeing to the bill. H.R. 3493 is amended. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed signify by saying no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it, and the bill is agreed to. The question now occurs on reporting the bill, H.R. 3493 is amended, to the House with a favorable recommendation. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed signify by saying no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. The motion is agreed to. Without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table. The staff is authorized to make any technical and conforming changes. Uh, okay, 
that, that concludes the 15 bills that we have marked up. Um, Mr. Chairman, I have a motion. Mr. Ratcliffe is recognized. Mr. Chairman, uh, pursuant to Rule 22, Clause 1 of the Rules of the House, I move that the committee authorize the chairman to offer such motions as may be necessary in the House to go to conference with the Senate on the bills ordered reported by this committee today or on similar Senate bills. Without objection, the motion is agreed to. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Ch uh, ranking members recognized. Uh, pursuant to House Rule 11, Clause 2L, I ask that members have two calendar days to file with the clerk of the committee supplemental, additional, or minority views on each of the bills ordered, reported by the committee today. Uh, without objection, so ordered. Let me just close by thanking uh, all the members on both sides of the aisle uh, and staff on both sides of the aisle for what was a very uh, smooth and bipartisan markup and probably one of the fastest markups of 15 bills uh, in the history of this committee. Um, so let me just say thank you to everyone. And with that, the committee now stands adjourned. Good job, buddy.